If you're ready, you're oh. settled. Yeah. yeah. This reminds me of audio engineering days. Yeah, audio engineering. Did, um, that, did you study that in uh, in uni? Yeah, did a year of it. How was that? Yeah, well, I wasn't too bad. What is audio engineering anyway? So, uh, engineering audio really like yeah, it's like all studio work and stuff. So, yeah, essentially learned how to like record in a studio setting, set up PA systems, okay. film sound, MIDI, all oh, that sort right. of stuff. God, that already so, sounds frustrating in itself. I mean, because I'm, I don't know how you are in editing and stuff, which I'm guessing you're pretty good at, because it's pretty much what you do all the time. But I hate it. Eh? <laughs> if I if I could pay someone as cheap as I can to do all my <laughs> editing, I mean, podcasting is easy. Just chuck a intro, outro, and then just cut any little mistakes in between. But I yeah. I can't be bothered doing it. Eh? Um, yeah, that. But. I had a gamble with, with Fiber, just Fiber, Fiverr, and <laughs> I don't know, I just, it, I've got trust issues. Yeah. i got trust issues. Unless I've met the person, like, face-to-face, I don't know, it's a bit difficult. What do you well, want? <laughs> yeah. Bro, he's busy. You're too, you're too oh, busy. Oh, 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 at least I look busy. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Like, like, you know, is, look busy. Great. Half the time I'm watching... Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm getting back into watching Suits now, so... Oh, Suits. <laughs> Listen, I think we should at least dedicate some of this podcast to talking about our favorite anime and favorite movies, for sure. Because it's really hard to come by people who sort of run with the same level of anime that I do. You guys probably a bit higher than me. No, probably a bit higher than me. This, this is the anime guy, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm I in... wish I had another mic. We could be doing like three people going on it, man. Oh, don't worry. As soon as, as, soon as you hit the anime part, I'll be like... All right, I'm just going to pass this mic over. <laughs> I'm in the, uh, I'm in the, I only play Pokemon Go and Dragon Ball Super. That's it. Oh, man. I've got a dude upstairs. My brother-in-law. He, he's he's been number one Pokemon Go. Z Ziva? No. No. Just Pokemon Go. It's sort of his, uh, his main addiction. He still sends me pictures. I got a shiny. And I stopped playing Pokemon like six months ago. I was, I was, I was, I was, literally, I was literally playing Pokemon Go on the way here. <laughs> In the car. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, mm. gotta, oh, gotta get that XP, man. Gotta get that XP. Not to mention, uh, Community Day just finished, didn't it? Ghastly? Yeah, ghastly. I, um, oh, I must have on a shiny bad. Ghastly. <laughs> oh man. Well, listen, I, I appreciate you coming out to to West Auckland for the podcast, man. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. No, no, I appreciate it greatly. Now, how long have I I've been following you on social media for? A while now. And I think I got introduced to you shortly after. I, I kind of bumped into you at the opening for My Father's Kingdom. Yes. I didn't introduce myself then, but I did know you because you you know Janelle. Oh, uh, yes. Nelly? Augsburg. Yes, yes, yes. The Bergsy. Shout out to the Bergs. Yes. Yeah, and and then it's really rare for me because I don't really follow a lot of people on social media anyway. It's really yeah. rare for me to see a, an Islander who run heaps of vlogs, pretty much an influencer on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still get weirded out when people say influencer. I, but that's probably a good thing. It mean, means that you're still grounded, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, how, how did that all start? Well, the vlogs... The vlogs was original. Like you go back to my first vlog where I literally have a box of fruit, and I say, "Oh, the vlog, yo, hey everyone, this vlog here is gonna be um, me losing weight, and you're gonna see the progress of all of that." And then it's literally like four or five months mm. of my mate annoying me and so going, "Where's another vlog?" And then I literally, and then from like. Yeah, four or five months later, I, I literally carry my camera with me everywhere. And eventually the vlog morphed from me losing weight mm. to me making use of all the gear that I have. Right. Like, yeah, like there's no point in having like this DSLR and like these skills, like editing wise, if I'm not like putting them to good use or at least practicing to get better. Right. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So then like, so then that's what the vlog became. And then now it's 
kind of almost like, well, I haven't posted one in a while, but my brother apparently he 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 says that some people he meets. What's that app called? Vigo, 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 go. Nani, Vigo, Nani, Vigo, Vigo. Apparently, like some people, <laughs> some people on there subscribe to me and they go, "Hey, can you tell your brother to like post more vlogs and stuff?" And I'm All like, right. Do people watch my vlogs? Like, I'm still surprised that people watch people other than my cousins watch my vlogs. I, I don't know if you knew this, but you you're, you're you're semi-famous, man. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I know it's probably weird saying that, but you you're pretty well known. You know the amount of followers that you got and the amount of reactions that you get to your vlogs. I mean, put aside YouTube for one thing. You look at your IG and you look at your Twitter, which I've recently just jumped back on. Twitter's evil, by Twitter the way. Twitter is evil. Twitter yes. is evil. We'll, we'll touch back on Twitter <laughs> in a little while. But so, how how long has that been actually going for? How long have you been vlogging? How long have you been sort of working the your social media stuff? Man, where well, was my first vlog? I might have. Said, I think my first vlog was like probably like two. No, not two. When was all the Matamatonga stuff? Probably like 2017. Okay. Or something. I can't remember. Oh, but, uh, you know what? It's let's have a race yeah. to see who can find the first spot. Is it on YouTube? Let, let me let me pop yeah. it in. So, un- <laughs> unfortunately for the <laughs> for the for the <laughs> listeners, they're going to be like, "What the fuck are these What's guys doing?" On? Well, first off, we are looking to see what is Isaw's first first vlog. First vlog. Holy crap! And that is not the right person I was looking okay. for. Who the hell is? Because it's um. Yeah, I think it was like back in like 2016 or something. Well, that's quite a while back, you know? Uh-oh. Well, look at you. Look at you. If you're over 2K subscribers. That's scary. Jeez, 262 videos. That is that is effort, my friend. We need more. Look at this. Look at this. Fresh vlog every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. <laughs> and how often and is have, that? And I haven't posted one. <laughs> and whenever I it's, do post one, it's never on time. Brother, it's hard, man. <laughs> it is hard. Me, just you know, just starting this up, and I've only started this for like a couple of months now. This is this this one will be episode thirteen, and to try do something every week and then post it up, mm. like let alone doing it three times a week. Mm. Oh man, that's time and effort. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then there was a period of time where I was doing it daily. Um, wow, and then you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like I should go back to vlogging. Is that, is that the one? Uh, two seven years ago? No, no, no. no that's no. that's from when I was recording and our little we we're living in a garage back then. Oh yeah. Oh man. Well, listen, you've got <laughs> over two hundred videos, man. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just say, for argument's sake, you've been doing it for a while. Yeah, you've been doing it long enough where you've built up a following. You've built up a, a brand, almost. Yeah. I would say. You know, and um, yeah, I just, I always had a question because me personally, yep. as soon as the camera turns on, I freeze. I, I feel like talking to a camera is one of the most difficult things a person can do. But yeah, for you, it looks quite natural. You sort of, you're able to articulate yourself so well. Is there a difference having to talk to a person and talking essentially to yourself through a camera? Um... Not really. I mean, what is it? I think it's because, like, I've watched so many of Casey Neistat's vlogs. Oh, like, good old dude, Casey, yeah. That dude's my hero, eh? Bro. Um, I've watched so many of his vlogs where, you know, the camera, where he treats the camera like it's any one of the audience, where he talks to the camera, and... I feel like I haven't done enough of that, but the, but at the same time, I'm like, why am I why am I afraid? Why am I being you know ma mm. of the camera? Why am I being embarrassed to talk to the camera? So, um, if I can't if I can't properly explain what's going on or um, be myself in front of the camera, then I'm not only um, cheating myself, but I'm also cheating the audience. Because mm. that's a hard thing to do. Because obviously with cameraing and, and vlogging editing you can edit things you don't like you yeah. know you can sort of re-record things you can try over and over and over again yeah is it is it difficult not to sort of build a, a persona that's sort of different to your everyday sort of person uh, yeah 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 like what is it everyone like 
yeah, you'll especially you'll you'll see a guy like David Dobrik, like he's not twenty four seven, like ah, uh, you know, laughing, doing all the crazy stuff. Like yeah, yeah, of course, they plan a lot of those skits. Mm. Um, whereas with me, because a lot of the stuff I vlog is like lifestyle stuff, just hanging out with friends and mm. whatnot. I think the biggest thing that I have to balance between on camera me and off camera me is is that balance itself is just having the camera on mm. you know like and when the camera is on i have to remind myself that you know not to play it up mm. and not to try and you know whoa, you know yeah i mean you can you can tell when you look at um you know there's there's a one in a billion vlogs out there obviously and you for me like just just randomly going into the pits of youtube you find the most randomest videos and stuff and you know you stumble yeah. across the vlog and, and you when you watch it for whatever reason usually it's the title <laughs> because it's interesting <laughs> you know the top 10 best anime fighters with swords something stupid like that yeah but then you sort of you hear someone and it sounds a bit what you call it sounds forced you know, yeah. like they're trying to become a person that they think the audience likes, and it comes across disingenuine. Mm -hmm. It disingenuous the word. It, does, it doesn't yeah, disingenuous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't look genuine, right? Yeah. But yours is a little bit different. Like I've before coming in, I've had to sort of look at most of your videos and mostly your latest oh, ones. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you apologizing about? I've I've enjoyed them actually, <sighs> because before I was like, I'm not really big into vlogs, you yeah. know, but. There's certain topics that people sort of vlog about that is in a lot of interest to me. You know, one one of them in particular is the mental health side. But we'll mm. we're jumping a bit ahead, so we will talk about mental health obviously down the line. But the way that you sort of go about it, it, it's very genuine. You know, you're obviously trying to portray a message. You're trying to sort of express your opinions and your thoughts, and it comes across like this is something that's important to me, and I really want other people to hear it. And a little that's a little bit one of the reasons why I started this podcast was to get certain opinions that I couldn't, I don't know out there. You know, there's certain mm -hmm. opinions that I hold that's not as common in the Pacifica community as, mm -hmm. as, as well as what's already out there, you know? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I think in most of my podcasts, it sounds like I'm shitting on Dangata Pacifica, but I'm really not. <laughs> I am honestly not. They, they, they do tremendous good. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, they're, they're, there's time constraints. Yeah. You know, there's certain things that they can't talk about yeah. on air. Um, they're you, restricted to a certain you gotta degree. You got to please that white man, man. You got to please the white man. man. Yeah, pays the, the bills. Yeah. All right, master. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> is this all right? <laughs> but, please, may I have another? But, you know, and, you know, your, your one in particular, where you sort of were brought on and talking about, you know, your history in, in mental health and stuff. It, it was it was good because we got a, a, an overview basically but nothing mm. specific and we it, you weren't given an opportunity because of the time constraints obviously not oh, because yeah. they didn't yeah. want to yeah you know the way you could have elaborated on a little bit more and i don't know if you felt i mean it's also over a year ago when you did that yeah it was a while back yeah and, and it sounded like you had more to say but maybe felt that you didn't have the right amount of time to do it and vlogging is one mm. of the things where time doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You do whatever you want. You edit yeah. whatever you like. Yeah. You can do whatever the hell you want. So I think that's a, that's a really good thing. And that's how my mind has changed slightly. You know, I mean, mm. certain vlogs I get a bit tired of. Like, here I am at the market. So it's like, <laughs> cool. Here I am eating this food. Like, that. that's awesome. But it's not my interest, personally. And I'm talking yeah. about personally my own interest. Yeah. You know, like I'm more into sort of people talking about mental health. I like controversies, like people holding certain political views that's not the norm. You know, even just talking about conspiracy theories, mm. you, you know, just anything that's sort of a topic that you don't hear often. Yeah. I'm into it, man. I'm into yeah. it 100%. And specifically topics that's not discussed as much in the Pacifica community. Yeah. Mental health. I know I keep coming back to mental health, but it yeah. is one of those things that's highlighted year in, year out. And yet no major changes has actually sort of sprung from, yeah. from all these things. But sort of pulling back a bit more. I, I'm jumping ahead too much myself, so I do apologize. <laughs> but looking at um, looking at vol vlogging in spe specifically and sort of online presence, mm. there seems to be a, a surge of, of PIs. Have, have you yeah, noticed that? There's there's plenty of Busfika YouTubers. Uh, there's a little community called um you know the Polytube community. The, the that, one that Harriet uh, that runs. Harriet, that yeah. Harriet um started. Mm. Um, and I was at the first um Polytube um funnel. And um, fun fact, mm. all my footage from that day, pfft, gone. What do you mean by gone? Like 
my memory card corrupted. Oh no! <laughs> like and and it corrupted literally as I was going home. Oh no! So, what did you walk past a, a magnet or? I have, I have no oh, idea. Man. Like that's the first ever time I've ever had a memory card die on me like that. I feel like there's a conspiracy so, coming through. Like what happened at yeah, the, <laughs> the, the oh, polytube get together, yeah, man? It's like like whenever it comes to me, polytube just doesn't happen so doesn't want to happen so 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 the first polytube thing happened my camera died and mm. then last year's polytube thing happened it happened right during tongue and language week right and, then, <laughs> and my mom my mom brings home some like some probably some like day old like Lou CP or something right and i and i was like Lou, yeah i'm, in it. Yeah. I'm into it yeah <laughs> and then on the day of the actual polytube oh yeah let's go Mm. What's what's that? My, be- my, my oh, belly is uh, no. feeling a bit. Uh, yeah, made uh, quite a few trips to. Uh, the, the universe isn't making it easy for you yeah. to get the shit out there, like, man. Yeah, like <laughs> come on, man. Like come on, I just want to go hang out with fellow islander creators and network and stuff, and mm. you know, try to gain some clout. <laughs> yeah, make make those connections, <laughs> man. Those connections, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just coughing coronavirus everywhere. Oh no, I forgot to wear my mask. That's okay, um, we're all gonna die one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just be today. Nah. Um <laughs> Yeah, um Yeah, but um Oh there's like there's there's plenty of them out there and some of them have like real uh, like a real follow like me, I only have like two thousand odd follow uh subscribers on YouTube and um and and my Instagram's just blowing up now because of like all my little exercises and somehow, mm. somehow, we've like found twenty two twenty three thousand followers on TikTok. Wow, <laughs> TikTok's a thing though, eh? Yeah, TikTok is shit. TikTok is just where yeah. it's at right now, and that's where all my focus has gone to. So like, maybe yeah. So. But- but to a certain degree, um, subscribers and followers don't really represent nah. the amount of people that watch your stuff. I mean, nah. you look at the YouTube sort of views. Yeah. Like, you're getting way more than that, you know? So, it, it, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those person people that sort of watch, like, video upon video of someone on YouTube, but I just don't subscribe. I don't mm. know why. Yeah. I, I just... You're like, thank you. I've, I've gotten what I want out of you, but I'm not going to subscribe. I'm not going to succumb br- yeah. to the peer pressure. You're not going to tell me what to do. Please subscribe. <laughs> like, don't tell me what to do. No, I refuse. <laughs> if you didn't ask, I would do it. Yeah, That's what you're because you're telling me to do it. No, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm fighting against a system. So there must have been. <laughs> oh, I do apologize for all the YouTubers that I don't subscribe to. I do follow a lot of you, but I just don't subscribe. <laughs> You know, yeah. I want the same boat too, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna call out which names. ones are which. <laughs> I do follow as many PIs as I can, the ones that are sort of uh, bringing value to me. Yeah, you know, that's good. I had um, I had a guest last week, Tony Laulu. He's the guy who runs Digital Discipline. I don't know if you've heard of him or sort of here. He's sort of um, sort of like a father who's started a a movement. Well, he calls it a movement, but it's also a. Uh, almost like a support system to help people who are overly addicted to um to social media mm. you know and and there's there's heaps obviously you know i mean i'm very guilty of that i sort of you know feel really just, naked when i don't have my phone yeah, on me and just can't help it sometimes. just can't help it yeah um but he made an interesting point around um who we follow and who we subscribe to it and what we're consuming mm. and he, like one of the main things is that if you're following someone are they bringing you value you know, are they actually doing something for you that's more than just mindless? I'm um, eating fried chicken again. You know, um, you know, like the worst, <laughs> the worst ones are were, were you know my family guilty of that is um watching those damn uh, um, mukbangers. Mukbangs, yeah, far out, yeah, far out. Like, yep. what in 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 reality, what value is that bringing to me aside from making me hungry, angry, and hating this person who's in, obviously enjoying the goddamn food, enjoying like. And it's and it's not just like little bits of food. It's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous amounts. Like I'm just like I could probably eat all of that, but I won't because <laughs> no, I, yeah, because I don't want to. Yeah, but, but but you know what amazes me is that it doesn't look like they edit it. It seems like they just literally sit there and eat the like they buy yeah. like a family pack of this yeah. and they just. 
and I don't know whoever invented you know it's, ASMR is it ASMR it's just gluttony it, bro yeah bro but so good though yeah. <laughs> at the same time the same so time I can see why it's like, such yeah. a such a banger for most things because they yeah. actually bring food that's like ooh that looks interesting oh, that's or, a mock banging it's bang bro <laughs> fuck <laughs> god that needs to be on a t-shirt yeah. that needs to be on a t-shirt mock bang <laughs> bang bang <laughs> bangers <laughs> I mean, speaking of, uh, you know, uh, far-reaching social media and videos and stuff like that, oh, there's heaps of people that's made a, made a living from doing social media stuff. Yeah. You've been doing it for a while. Any, any sort of opportunities arose from that? Sort of like um, well, group stuff or interactions with other people? Has there, has any of your vlogs or videos sort of got you some... Uh, some some, some connections? Should have changed? Chicka, chicka, not necessarily monet, monetary all, always, oh. but... You know, just um, being involved in a project or sort of asking to sort of... Um... Uh, I think, um, yeah, because as, like, yeah, I I also work as a photographer, mm. like event photographer and stuff. And um, recently, like, built up a couple of relationships with a few people I've always wanted to work with. Mm. Um, and I feel like I'm maybe... Like this could be like the little seed plants, mm. me joining like the real like. Um, sorry, that's okay. Me. I just perked uh, too at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the like creative community. Like I I don't know. I I I tell myself I'm a creative on my on my Instagram thing. It says artist, mm. but I kind of don't feel like it. You know, like it's the I have, I suffer from the meanest imposter syndrome. Like I'm just like I'm just like I have a camera, photographer. Yeah. I vlog, vlogger. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, it's like what is it? I feel like sorry. The question was any interesting connections. Um, yeah. Uh, what is it? Benji Timu, um, lifestyle of Benji. Okay. He's a he's a part of No Six. That dude recently put me on and i've still i've still got something outstanding from them that i need to uh tick off the list but it's uh okay. but you're obviously hoping to build a, a brand yeah yeah, yeah so like, that's sort yeah. of what you're aiming for yeah like um obvi- like for me like the biggest end game is like to be able to like beat thanos obviously yeah <laughs> <laughs> beat thanos and yeah. and die a mighty death <laughs> in the arms for the good for the good of all ones. human beings um yeah nah but like honestly like bro Taika Waititi is my hero man mm. like you know when I saw him get up on stage and he was like you know indigenous um people are, are like you know the first storytellers I was like hell yeah makes sense yeah you know our, our Pacific people like great orators and not just orators and storytellers and like all that sort of stuff but we're also scientists you know navigating like the crazy Pacific Ocean and everything and People um, don't realize that Pacific Islanders actually made it to South America yeah. way before any of the Spanish or yeah. anything like that. Then, I mean, just, just, just think of where we are, yeah. you know, comparatively to where bloody South America is. Yeah. We, we were doing it way before it was cool. Yeah, way before we were the we, we were the original hipsters. You yeah. know, we're doing shit before it was mainstream. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how we got, that's how we got Kumala and, and Manioke. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah, so I think I learned to... I learned it from Big Bang Theory. Of all the shows, Big Bang Theory. Really? <laughs> when Sheldon goes tapioca, um, tapioca pudding. Mm. Tapioca pudding originates from the da da da. Like he named the like the Latin word for it, and it sounded like manioke. Really? Which is indigenous to South America, mm. and I was like, that confirms it. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's done. If it's on Big Bang, if it's for on Big sure, Bang, for sure, yeah, Illuminati confirmed. Yeah, and now, <laughs> and now, and now, like you know, all these like woke TikTokers and all that sort of stuff are like jumping on them. Like, I clocked that years ago. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get to the woke TikTokers <laughs> eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, like what is it? Yeah, no, nah, it's yeah. Hmm. Um. Sorry if I just deviated from no, the question. No, this is the whole point of the podcast, man. You just, wherever the conversation goes is where the conversation goes. Obviously, I've got certain things that, you know, yeah. I'd, I'd like to cover. But 
at this point, whatever we're fucking <clears throat> talking about is what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's all interesting to me and interesting to the, you know, to, to the listeners as well, for sure. So you talked about imposter syndrome. That's a pretty big one. Mostly, it's really common with the Pacific people, you know. Do you think it's because we're told to be humble yeah. all the time? Yeah. Be humble. Don't, you know, who are you? Who are yeah. you to sort of think you're this or that? Exactly. You know? Do you think it stems a little bit from our upbringing and sort of our culture as well? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, like, what is it? I'm sure, like, as a Tongan, you can relate to, what is it? We go to we go to a family event or something and you, or, or we go and take a whaka afe, mm. or, like, you're just presenting something to someone. And it's like the nicest fella, the nicest ngato you can clock. Mm. And you sit there and your mom goes, Which means which means like, oh here here's like a little like throwaway piece of like flex just to like, you know, kind of like so you can roll out on your kitchen like yeah. But it's fancy. No, the one where you uh, you present them with ten thousand dollars. We don't yeah, have a lot. We don't have a lot. But here's ten thousand you dollars. Go. You know, um, I mean that stems from humility. You yeah. Know? And, and humility is a big part of our culture because, you know, humility shows that you don't know everything, and there's other people that can possibly tell you what yeah. you don't know. It's it's knowing what you know and also acknowledging that you don't know everything. But it's that fake humility, man. It's, like, like, it's hard I'm, to be yeah. human. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's that <laughs> fake humility. Like, it's 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 like it, it it's good because it grounds you, but sure. it's terrible because it goes to show like it's a double edged sword. Mm. It's terrible because it just means that everything you do, it's never good enough. Mm. Yeah, I think it's sort of you know just just you know with all the the putus i've been to the the fuck off is the everything every mm. tongan event even someone events i think it stems possibly obviously my wife's doing tongan so she'll correct me later mm. but you know it stems from if you didn't have enough yeah but you obviously it's part of your, our tradition to present a, a gift you know a gift yeah. to sort of show our appreciation our support for whatever the event is if you didn't have a lot you present it where you could Right. And and that shows, you know, because the people receiving it would sort of acknowledge it and be thankful because yeah. you're you're it's the thought and, and the effort and, and the support that counts as opposed to the material goods. But yet now it's sort of evolved to it's, it's all becoming flex. Bro. What did you get? I'm a flex my 20. Yeah. Well, you got you got what? 20 meters of ngatu? Yeah. Where's my 40 at? Where's my 40? Where's my 40? Where's my loud day out? <laughs> You know, and you can have my child as yeah, well. Yeah. You know, are you gonna top that? It's, it's, it's like a, it's, it's like you're trying to up the next person, and it becomes very toxic. You know, it's funny you bring up with my child because it's just like it, it's just of that legend of the story of Gava. Yes, you know yeah, about yeah, the yeah. the Dui Donga coming in resting, and the parents are like, "Oh, you know, let's yeah. start panicking." And you yeah. know, the old kings like laying there next to the to their to their what is it was a talo or something their plant that they were gonna um that they were gonna like tao and give to the king I think and it was talo yeah I think yeah and then they made the ultimate sacrifice killed you their daughter their daughter you know but and, and that's sort of taking um humility a bit far you know in, in a way yeah. uh, trying to pay respects with yeah. you know and yeah anyone who's you know we're, we're obviously not doing the story justice <laughs> but it's a really good story and it's a lot of lot of sort of um a lot of lessons from it obviously yeah. you know but it's yeah i mean that's one of the biggest things because you know you look at our sort of pacifica community we you know poverty is quite a big big thing yeah and yet for you know and, and this is how financial sort of institutions prey on sort of our culture oh, it's like yeah. oh do you have a funeral coming up well you can oh, take you this can, yeah. you can come take this loan yeah. and come instant finance <laughs> instant finance <laughs> Fuck those guys, man. They got Stacey Jones. Bro. Uh, of all but, people. But you know, it's the thing where our pride sort of overtakes our actual ability to sort of maintain, you know, whatever sort of... Yeah. Um, and, and we're really bad at sort of um, presenting ourselves as something we're not. Yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, you, you don't want to be seen as someone who's struggling. You don't want to be seen as someone who can't, you know, complete their, their you know, um, their responsibilities and things yeah. like that. And that just turns into a really nasty, nasty cycle of shit. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, listen, I, I love our tradition. I love the meaning behind it. I love why we do these things. Mm. But I think we need to evolve as a people. You know, I don't think we can continue to do the same sort of shit we do day in, day out, knowing we can't facilitate it. You know, yeah. we need to be able to say, this is literally all I can do. Yeah. And I need, you know, because I'm, I'm sure the person who always receives it doesn't really care. Right. Mm. As long as you're there, because being there is, is a big, was, important part. Yeah. You know. The material stuff that you bring through, yeah. the color, all that stuff, that's, yeah. that's secondary. That's a bonus, yeah. Yeah. And if you, you know, but it comes from like that sort of selfish need. Like, I don't want to be seen as someone who doesn't, who's yeah. shit. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, what what do you think about that? I mean, do you think, you know, I know we're really big on our culture. We we, you know, we find it very important, something very sacred to us. But do you think we need to sort of evolve with the times and sort of maybe look, take a good look, hard look at ourselves and think, is this benefiting us as yeah. a people? I mean, yeah, hundred percent. Because you know, um, like I've seen it firsthand so many times, and in my household, it's like the perfect example. Last year, my dad was made like sale of the Misinale, mm. and you know, instantly with that label, it's like you got up, you got you've, responsibilities. You, yeah, you've yeah. got to, you you know, you got to put up or shut up. Um, and my dad was like, I ain't never seen my, I ain't never seen my dad like stress so yeah, I much. Can imagine. So, um, so we struggled yeah, quite, quite yeah. a fair bit. And, um, and to be honest, like we didn't fully recover until like just before lockdown. Damn. Um, but we made it through, but you know, for the oldies in there, like, what is it? I had a, I had a. I had a friend I was talking, I think my friend Fita, she said like, you know, things like Nisinale and like, you know, all the stuff where we like, you know, go and give stuff. We were conditioned, like us who grew up, who grew up nowadays, like, you know, millennials and all that sort of stuff. Like we see it as like transactional, mm. like all these like, you know, interactions and stuff where we give stuff like transactional, like what am I getting out of this? Mm. Mm. You know, whereas to like our oldies, they don't serving. care yeah it's yeah. about service to yeah. them it's transformational yeah you know and i don't think that's something i i've uh, like i've gotten it you know mm. like i could see it and like you know afterwards like you know it feels good yeah. but at the same time i'm like bruh like Man, we struggled so yeah. much. Is it worth the heartache yeah. just to get to that? Yeah. To get to the end. Does the does the end sort of justify, justify the means? Justify the means. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And to be honest, like us now, like as we're you know we're the ones who are pushing the culture forward. Mm. You know we're the custodians who take care of it now. You know it's up to us now to kind of take what's useful mm. and leave out what shit. <laughs> yeah it's hard to yeah you know, but, it's yeah. really hard to because it's, it's we do lose you know, i mean anything to do with evolving the culture and stuff like that it's it's gonna we, we will end up losing important aspects because yeah. it's, a lot of the time you try and sort of separate one aspect of, of our culture but it's sort of you know yeah. un, you know unintentionally sort of starts a domino effect and then you know it gets wiped out but and then you yeah. always have purists as well who'll be yes. like Ugh, that's not real time i mean there is a lesson to be learned around being able to serve others you yeah. know putting others before yourself yeah there that's something that's actually quite lacking in our communities now is being able to not think of yourself first and think of what can you do for others yeah you know? like you say a lot of the time a lot of the interactions with other people it's about transactional things you know yeah. like i'm gonna do this for you what you what are you gonna do, do for, for me? me and listen, we live in a white system it's a system we need to evolve with. We, it's a system we need to work with. Yeah. But at the same time, our core values need to remain the same. Yeah. You know? And it is about being able to serve others because that's the right thing to do. Yeah. You know? There's nothing more. If, if you've, you know, um, and you know, for the non-islanders that listen to this, you know, I mean, it, it's going to be difficult, I'm guessing, for a majority of them, not going to say all, but for a majority of them to really understand what it's like to do things for others, whatever that may be. And not expect anything back, yeah. knowing it's your responsibility yeah. that this must be carried out. And there's something actually quite fulfilling, whether it's spiritually or emotionally yeah. or something. But there is something very fulfilling about when, that. When, yeah, like, yeah, for mm. real. Like, anytime you go see, like, 
especially when you go visit oldies. Mm. You know, it's always like you gotta carry, you gotta carry a couple fifties, f- <laughs> bro. Yeah. I, you know what I feel? I, f- I I feel very scared for the future, especially you know the talking about Tongan culture in particular. We recently had a funeral, and yeah. not because of COVID and the lockdown, none of my parents could come through, none of the the elders could come through. Yeah. So who, who are we stuck with? Myself, my sister, and my younger cousins. We don't know jack shit about the Kavenga, what needs to happen, mm. the, you know, the, um, you know, just, oh, I don't even know the words. That's how bad it yeah. is, you know? And it Sorry made me. Sorry to hear you had to go through that, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, um, it's one of those things where it's like, it, I mean, it wasn't the fact that they weren't there. Yeah. My concern was, I don't know the protocol. You know, I don't yeah. know what needs to happen yeah. at this stage of the funeral. I don't know yeah. what needs to happen here. When I'm speaking, I mean, I didn't speak because I pussied out last, you know, <laughs> I pussied out, which I will continue to do until I actually know how to do it properly. Yeah. But, you know, there's a way of presenting your color where you sort of have a big, almost like a speech ready yeah. because that's how it's done. Yeah. And I sort of looked at everything and sort of reflected back. I was like, you know what, man, it is going to be a tough tough next couple of decades once our parents go when those yeah. people who hold that knowledge yeah. hold that those gatekeepers those gatekeepers once they go you kind of hope that there's someone that's that kind of knows it you know because you can take any average tongan off the street in tonga they know yeah they know what needs to happen they may not do it as well as the our, our elders but they could do it yeah you take any Tongan off the street in New Zealand. In New Zealand. They are lost. And and I'm guilty of yeah. that, for sure. And I grew up in Tonga. Yeah. You know? So, I, I mean, I'm, 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 you know, because it's there goes like, okay, but you should be teaching your children. That's like, how am I going to teach something I don't know? Yeah. And that's my fault. Because I didn't find it valuable then. I didn't yeah. want to know because I'm busy off having fun with a couple of mates and things like that. But I'm looking to the future and I'm thinking, man, I really hope, you know, Mm. That at some point I'll be able to sort of recognize where my downfall are, but then actually find ways of sort of upping it, you know. And maybe mm. it's taking the Tongan courses <laughs> that are yeah. available all around. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it's it's a big fear of mine, eh? You know, uh, yeah. I mean, and that's, and that's a real fear. Like, I'm terrified of that too. Mm. Like, I'm sure like most Tongans can relate to this. We've been to how many bottles? Mm. We've seen how all of this stuff goes down but when push comes to shove and it's our oldies who are gone exactly. like we we like we're going to like we're going to be we're going to be you know out in the cold and um and and I'm petrified of that so like I literally annoy my parents mm. all the time and I'm sure like you know I've asked him like the same thing like probably 10 20 times but it's just so I can remember yeah so there's some feeling I thought just doesn't just like waltz in and like when they during their funeral and goes, I'm achy, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're like, but I ain't never seen you before. Yeah, but, and you are, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it's it's happened, you know. I yeah. mean, I mean, I, I'll tell you a situation. I'm um, doing my grandfather's funeral years ago um, when I was living in Tonga still. Um, we had a sort of family get together at another place, and yeah. um, at left at my grandmother's place. Well, just some of my uh, older cousins who just wanted to just stay there, mm-hmm. and some random group of people, like finamatoas and, and guys, they came through, explained and tried to explain that they're this person from this person's family, and they're here to collect some ngatu, you know. Yeah. So for them, they didn't actually know who this person was, but because they didn't know any better, they kind of gave it, Yeah, you know? So that's sort of like a real world example of sort of your lack of knowledge of who's who, you know, um, what needs to happen and sort of, you know, it's, it's, and, uh, and, 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 and you've got like, and you've got to have this like crazy knowledge of your genealogy. Yes. Right. Like I'm right now, I'm still getting like, they're st- they're still first cousins I haven't met, mm. right? And and I'm 27 now, and I still have some first cousins I haven't met. Um, there's like, what is it? Especially getting to know, um, find out Damaki, mm. you know, children who are born out of wedlock yep. that, you know, unfortunately like seem like real shunned upon back in the day and still are now, which mm. is crazy. Mm. But that just goes to show, like how, 
is it the word Puritan? Is that the right word I'm looking for here? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, like, you know, how, like, yeah, how, like, yeah. And it even goes to show, like, even on tongue and birth certificates, is this child legitimate or illegitimate? Uh, you I, know, so you can claim that land. Yeah, I was about to say, um, it's important if it's, uh, because there is land issues in Tonga is, yeah. is always the big thing, so you kind of yeah. need it, yeah. But, but you know, as yeah. you say, land has ice. <laughs> if you're not meant to be on that land, you'll end up uh, getting a few uh, boils and uh, well, you get a lot get worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from yeah, get possessed. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, but um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot oh, what the question was forgot. as well. Um, but yeah, nah, it's it's about. I think I think the, the the general conversation was about. I think we do need to evolve. Yeah. As as a, as a people, as a culture, but also at the same time, we need to still maintain all of those values that's yeah. always been instilled to us through our parents maybe through smacking but <laughs> it's a value that, that has been instilled within me whether it's that's it, a, <laughs> apparently that's a colonial thing smacking yeah doubt it doubt but, it. Then, but, pre, same, pre, but, but yeah pre colonization tongans you're saying they don't uh, hit their kids yeah at the same time I'm like are you sure? tribal wars brother we we, we, we did worse we used, to, <laughs> we used to fight each other and eat each other and eat each other smacking <laughs> our kids is, is <laughs> We're not too far away from that. No, no. I think they made the made us feel guilty about it. You know, I think that that was. The, <laughs> yeah, let's let's uh, rescind the anti smacking law for all the Tongans out there. Hey man, <laughs> if, you've, if you've if you've never uh, received some some light miles from. <laughs> You're probably a dickhead <laughs> because I, I mean, I mean, what's your what's your thoughts on that now that we're kind of on that subject? Because obviously, the anti-smacking law came in x amount of years ago here in New Zealand, and it was a, it's a topic of conversation because yeah. Pacific Islanders, not just Pacific Islanders, even yeah. Europeans and yeah. stuff, they they hit their kids, and there was sort of like a, you know, a, a poor distinction between. Uh, abuse yeah and a, and a poor distinction between abuse and uh, uh what's the proper word Te- teaching your kids a lesson rearing, rearing. child rearing <laughs> child there we go <laughs> you know <laughs> and and it's sort of it's one of those topics where you, you know as soon as you talk about abuse for children it completely polarizes everything else you know because if you go if you're that person at the time who goes oh no i smacked my children you're you. abusing your yeah. child. How dare you? You know, but like, I'm gonna cancel you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the cancel culture, please, please no. This podcast is probably gonna be canceled because of the topics we're talking about. But I don't give a fuck. Sorry, sorry. I don't give a fuck. You know, you can cancel me if you want. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things where, I, what? Where do you stand on that? Do you think that? Do you think there is a difference? Should we Man, beat the shit out of the kids know, or do what? Know, do you know, like, I'm a kid who was beating the shit out of. Yeah, and, and I look, brother. and I look back, and I'm like, "Why did I get a hiding?" Seems justified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna try find a reason why I shouldn't have got hit. Oh no! Um, yeah, no. like you know, that's typical. Like that's like typical. Like little shit, but like so, like I shouldn't have gotten a hiding. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I should have done that. I should have washed gone, the dishes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, getting that hiding stopped me from playing with the stove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting that consequences. Hiding, yeah, consequences. And, and that's the difference, you know, is that the abuse side of things is children getting beaten up for no reason. Yeah, you that's know? abuse. But I think the difference is that we, it, it was a punishment because we did something wrong. Yeah. It obviously has to come from a place of love. If it's not coming from a place of love, it's abuse, for sure. Yeah. I, I think I think that's the biggest distinction. Yeah. As hard as that is to, to measure. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I think it is coming from a place of love because I, I talk to people, you know, as, as my job as a, as a mental health nurse, I talk to lots and lots of people. And the ones that don't, that definitely weren't hit as a child, they, they have certain mannerisms where they sort of feel like everything, they, they, they owe everything, they own everything. They yeah. sort of want, you know, yeah, this, yeah, what yeah. was that? Entitlement. Entitlement. Thank you. Yeah. Entitlement. That's the word I'm looking yeah, for. Is. You know? And I'm not, listen, I'm not saying smacking is the way, you know, I'm just saying, it is the I, way. I don't think, <laughs> I'm not saying smacking is the way, but if you want to smack, let me know. <laughs> you come there and record it for you yeah. and put it on my vlog. One, one big slap, <laughs> hit me up, DM me, man. <laughs> no, for real though, like, yeah. oh, you look at some people and you're like, bro, honestly, that person just needs a good slap to the face. Bro. 
Right. Like, but even like even me when I look at myself sometimes, like, bro, why didn't someone just come and knock me out for saying that or doing this? Like, I'm pretty mm. sure like I'll listen back to this podcast in a couple of years time and I'll be like, you idiots, <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing. No, but that's but that but the whole point of having this conversation is to learn new new things. You know, to yeah. sort of share ideas and and come you know come to some sort of idea of the you know an evolved opinion. You know, perspective, a different perspective, which is always the whole point of these podcasts, yeah. you know. But it, it's one of those conversations that's not talked about. Yeah. You know? I mean, how often during the anti smacking law was it white people talking to other white people about what they think violence is and hitting your children when it is white people that do a majority of the yeah. violence to their children, Yeah, you know. And yet we weren't in that conversation as much because, I mean... Our culture is is based around you know um, love, yeah. you know service, as we mentioned yeah. earlier, and part of that is teaching a little bit w- your role, yeah, you know, and, and consequences for things that aren't of, of <laughs> consequences for things that you weren't supposed to do, yeah. you know. Like, yes, is there a way better way of doing it? Possibly, yeah. You know, is it, is smacking going to cause negative effects? Most likely, yeah. You know, well, probably more, not most likely, but yes, yes, I can't say that it doesn't. But from personal experience, as anecdotal as that is, the people that I've met who have been disciplined, I think that's the word I want to use. Mm-hmm. The people that have been disciplined from loving families. <laughs> loving families. This is probably so yeah. odd for non islanders <laughs> to hear, right? Eh? Well, disciplined? Yeah. Love? 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 With a belt. Thank you very much. You know? <laughs> or an extension cord. <laughs> or an extension cord. <laughs> or a hose. Oh, God. Oh, I got a hiding with a. <laughs> I got a, I got a hiding with a bread the knife. Wooden spoon, the wooden spoon. Oh, wooden, yeah, I yeah. never got a hiding with a wooden spoon. I hit the wooden spoons once upon oh, a time. Man. I got to the point where I was so naughty and getting hit so often. I was like, hmm. In my brain, if I hide the wooden spoons, I'm not gonna get, oh, hit. get hit. Nope, just found something else. Yeah, out comes the high heels. But but you know, but I, <laughs> <laughs> here comes whatever's closest to you. <laughs> oh man, here comes the pot plants. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, all jokes aside, <laughs> right? All jokes aside, <laughs> reflecting on it. Right, reflecting on it all, you know, and anyone who's sort of been in similar positions as we have been reflecting back on it, it's taught me the difference between right and wrong in a yep. very quick, concise, yep. no fucking about sort of yep. way, you know. I mean, you know, a lot of people aren't lucky to, enough to have caring parents and, 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 you know, both a mom and a dad or a dad and a dad or a mom and a mom, however you want to fucking look at it. Which right? kind of seems contradictory for what we're talking about. It doesn't that matter. It really you know? does. Yeah, it does. It does. But you have to acknowledge it yeah, all. Right? You have yeah. to acknowledge the mixed families, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, like if you look at, oh, see, I've already sort of lost track of what yeah. I was saying. But I think, you know, you look at them and they're a little bit more put together. You know, look look at the next generation behind us and, and the generation behind them and look at the way that they sort of interact with other people. The entitlement, as uh, your brother pointed out earlier, mm. you know, it's so rampant. And it was no rampant. It wasn't as, I mean, no, not using my words correctly. It was so obvious when I moved here from Tonga. I moved yeah. from Tonga here for seventh form and I've never seen a student talk back to a teacher and not get the taste slapped out of his mouth. Mm. Day one, math class, some white kid stands up, says, fuck you. Fuck you, sir. Wow. Respectfully, obviously. Respectfully. <laughs> fuck you, sir. Flipped his desk and walked out. And I was like, smack him. Smack him. Yeah. You're not going to smack him. You know, and, and that goes, you know, and that's why there's a lot of, you know, kind of segues into teachers. But you know, that's probably a big reason why te- there's not a lot of people going into teaching. The big reason why a lot of teachers now are deciding to leave the job. Yeah. And, and b- because, A, they have zero power. Yeah, to do much, and th- I mean, how do you want to be disrespected daily by yeah. the one little sickle in your class yeah. who who you know is 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 hurting? Obviously, driven by yeah. trauma and all that stuff, but you can only take so much, man. Yeah, you know, and also they're not getting paid enough. Definitely not getting paid enough. Those damn civil servants, man. Well, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Yeah. So, but uh, it's, oh. it's it's so funny though you say that because, uh my <laughs> not that you had Mr. Tonga as a teacher. Eh? Yeah, so, so back when we were in primary, yeah, my my brother had um one of the few Tongan teachers at the school, and my parents went in for parent interviews, and then they, you know, during parent interviews, they're like, oh fair fair, yeah yeah, you know, because they know what he's like at home, they don't know what he's like at school, and then they turn around and they said to the teacher, you know, kapawe ki yanga ayo ki akai ki 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 ki
they permission. give they give permission to the teacher to yeah, do that. There's a guy who went to Tonga High for ninety percent of my life. I the same conversation my dad had with the teacher <laughs> every year. Not not the end, beginning, beginning yeah. of the year. You know, come meet the teachers and stuff. Like, oh, you know, fucking give him a hiding. You know, and I probably deserved it. But there's also a reason why I probably didn't show up to class. Yeah, yeah. To class. But you know, I think you know. I mean, there's a lot of arguments to say that it doesn't change behaviors, but mm. what it definitely reinforces is right and wrong. Yeah, for sure. It, it is, this is at its most extreme yeah. levels. You know, but it, yeah. But at the same time, it's like you know, I want to give you this hiding for stealing this, mm. and this little hiding here doesn't compare to nothing. To whereas if you like steal something bigger and go mm. to jail and get your ass beat by the black power and the Mongol mob, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh god, any of that. Yeah, well, that's you know, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah, you know, I mean that that's a saying that's coming from white people. So obviously, yeah. it's not just a brown thing, right? Yeah, and and you're right. You kind of need to look at the payoff. I don't know if there's actual studies out there to show that if you smack your kid, they're not going to end. They're less likely to end up in jail, you know, because how do you measure, you know, the intention, the intention yeah. for sort of discipline? But as anecdotal as it is, my friends and 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 the people that I grew up with who did get hidings. Um, and did have caring families are really well put together um they're, they're doing the things that they find important yeah. they're good people mm. you know some of them are assholes <laughs> we all have that in we us. all we, we all, all do. Are. but i love them all you know but you know it's it's it, it's anecdotal i know you yeah. know and everyone's gonna say look you're just not proof I'm like, well, fuck you but i think it, it's it's enough evidence for me to sort of see that you know maybe there's something there yeah you know I don't, you know, I don't smack my children, you yeah. know, um, because I could go to jail for that. Mm. <laughs> but it, it's one of those things where I, I can see, you know, and I, and I always use this as a time to sort of reflect on my life and how that's impacted my views and sort of how I now raise my children and stuff. And, yeah, you know, I think I've benefited from discipline yeah. and now I don't have to discipline my children because I kind of know what's run wrong and what, mm. you know, and, and sort of how to sort of manage that a little bit yeah. more better. Yeah, yeah. It is one of those long-winded conversations. <laughs> well, probably just my last point that I might mm. bring up to this is that I remember one time my mom threatened to give me a hiding, mm. and I thought I was I'd be slick. And this, I think, this is, Russell Peters did this as a joke as well. But I was like, I've done this before. Mm. Where's where? Yeah, she goes, "Don't die, go ahead, I'll give you. You know, I'll give of you a hiding when we get home." And I was like, "Okay, fine." And on the way home, driving, yeah, I go, I'm going to call the police. And she goes, call the police. <laughs> she called my bluff. Oh, no. Call the police. Well, if I go to jail, then that means you're not going to have a house to live in. If you're not going to have a house to live in, you're going to be a street kid. You're going to be a street, <laughs> street kid. kid. Street kid. <laughs> you're going to be a, live on the street and ask people for money. And then uh. what? What are you going to do? I'm crying <laughs> before I even get the hiding. <laughs> This is that psychological warfare. The psycho that every parent knows. <laughs> they know how to trigger their kids and the, what their greatest yeah, fears man. are for sure. Oh yeah, man. man! Oh, since we're sharing uh, smacking <laughs> stories and and getting hidings, I will, I'll throw my dad under the bus on this one. So like, it, it's a funny. I tell everyone this story because it's it a it's something that has stayed with me for a very long time because it's actually taught me that you can't fuck about. Yeah. If you have a responsibility, you need to make sure you do it. So. Yeah. In Tonga, we, we had pigs, not not for like eating, but like uh, for like food scraps and stuff. So we yeah. sort of had a lot of pigs. And my job was at the end of the school day was always to go feed the pigs. Feed take the take pigs. the pig bucket with all the scraps, do that. You know, if there's coconuts that need to be cut off for the pig, you know, feed the pigs. Mm -hmm. And so get home, pissing about as kids do most mm -hmm. of the time. And then my dad comes back from work, goes, hey, feed the pigs? No, go do it now. Cool. Okay, I'm going to go do it. So I stop whatever I'm doing in the house, mm -hmm. grab the pig bucket. Don't go straight to the pig pen. But go around the corner and go to the trampoline. Start jumping on the trampoline. Yeah. Jump and jump and jump. And my dad comes out. He fed the pigs. No, no, I'm going now. I'm going now. Jumping, jump, jumping. And no word of a lie. This happens in slow motion in my memory. Um, I jump mid air. I just feel this big. Whoop! Bam! Oh, damn. Stop. Fly forward. Fly forward. It's like, you know, that, that picture of like, like my body's like an X. And I'm yeah. flying this yeah. way. Yeah. And I fall on the ground. I turn around, my dad, he's fuming. I thought I tried to yeah. go feed the pigs. And then he walks to me. I think, I'm going to outrun this dude. I turn around, run. Bro, my dad starts sprinting. And I think the running made it worse. Yeah. Running yeah. away. <laughs> I 
<laughs> just charges up their anger. It, it just and, oh, he chased me down, bro. This is the fastest. I, I didn't realize how quick my dad was. He grabbed me and then he and get you know to to top it all off, getting a hiding, massive hiding. This is probably the biggest hiding in my life. I see in the window my sister and my cousin laughing their asses off at me, and that is what, <laughs> you know it's like help me, help me. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> and help me help you. Yeah, jeez. I hope you're next. That's yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, I hope he finds some reason that you guys something you guys haven't done. And <laughs> <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I never not fed the pigs after that. Yeah, on time. You know. Do you know that's so relatable? I've I've had that happen to me so many times. <laughs> not necessarily feeding the pigs because I grew up here in New Zealand, mm. but damn. I know. I feel your pain, brother. I yeah. feel your pain. Yeah, of course. Oh, pain is pain. <sighs> <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know what happened good with that. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the middle of recording a podcast, yes, sir. Yeah. No, he's getting flashbacks. Hey? He's like, oh, yeah, that that's, happened to me too. That's the, that's the, that's the PTSD. <laughs> yeah, the PTSD. Yeah. War flashbacks. Perfect. We've now hit the mental health topic now. Now that we're already here. <laughs> All right. All, all joking aside, <laughs> right now, um, we kind of we kind of alluded to it earlier on the podcast, but like you know, close to a year ago, you sort of um, were sort of featured on Dunk Pacifica talking about mental health and sort of your experiences through that. Th- that's a tough thing to do. It's a tough thing to sort of lay your heart out to sort of everyone, and I know you're doing it in your blog, vlogs as well. Mm. Vlog, blog, it's a vlog, vlog, it's vlog, a vlog. Yeah. You know, I mean, was that difficult to sort of talk about? your experiences and share that with the world? Well, I had already posted it on the vlogs. Um, so, so like, what is it? When when I got the call from, I think, was it John or Marama? I think it was... When I got the call Uncle from... Uncle John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uncle John, that dude is quickly becoming an OG status. He's already, if not Poster boy for Tonga, man. He's a OG poster boy for Tongans all over the place. In the Pacific community. Love that dude. John Bolo, he's a man. Um, <clears throat> not to mention, isn't I reckon the one thing that will make it perfect is change his name from John to Sione. Sione. Sione Bolo. Sione Bolo. Bro, Sione Bolo. Shout out to Sione Bolo, man. Out, Sione Bolo, if you're listening to this. <laughs> He shared my last podcast, so hopefully coming, he'll listen coming, to this. I'm going to tag him podcast. on this. Hey, change your name to Sione Bulu. Yeah. I'll vote, I'll vote to you as a prime minister. Yes, <laughs> I will. I'll vote for Sione Bulu. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, um, what is it? It was hard. Mm. Because I don't know what to expect. You know, like, they had kind of given me a few pointers on how it would go um, on the interview on TV. I was trying not to swear. Because we were going live. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a hard one. Um, but, yeah. Um, like, yeah, you had alluded to it before. Like, and you hit it right on the head. Like, the time constraints on, on TV meant that I couldn't dive too deep. But at the same time, I think it was a good thing. Mm. Because it may have triggered me or it may have triggered someone else who was watching. Yeah. And that's that's like a delicate balance that you have to, like, find... Um, and maintain because you don't want to make it worse for other people. Mm. Um, that makes and, sense, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and in my vlogs and stuff, I do all my crying and my snot nose and all that sort of stuff, like, you know, people people dying and myself, you know, in my dark spots. Um, and honestly, I literally just, like, came out of, like, a real dark spot just mm. this weekend. Um, and... Sometimes you do just need to sit down and have a fat cry for a few hours. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes you do, um, you kind of burn yourself out. And that's, mm. and that's where I kind of was. I was burnt out. I, you know, I, I wanted to do so much more, but, I, you know, I couldn't. I felt like a failure. I felt like, you know, when all those, like, bad things kind of just pile up, mm. you know, that one sane thought just kind of, like... You know, can't get out, and um, you know, you're just drowning in a sea of negative thoughts. Mm. It does sound like a lot of the people that I sort of talk to. They always talk about they, they go through this period of where everything's going well for them, yeah. you know. And re- even if things are still going well, it's a random thought. 
a random thing that triggers you. And yeah. it starts off as almost like a little flame. And yeah. the more you try to put it out, you have to it's concentrate just, on it. Yeah. You know, and, and it gets gets pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying in terms of um, being careful with what you say because you don't want to trigger others. Um, I'm hopefully going to have a, a psychologist um, popping on the podcast at some point. Mm. And, and a lot of the things he talked to me about, um, not about parano- not about paranoia and, and sort of, but, but he's wary about what he says because he's still a clinical psychologist. So he, he, he sees people and he doesn't want to say things that may trigger, unintentionally trigger people. Mm. And, and it's a tough one because I think when you're going to talk about mental health, someone will always be triggered. Yeah. You know, not to be funny, but there's always those people that get triggered for no reason. Yeah. You know? They love being triggered. You know? Yeah. But the people who do get triggered and who are at risk, shall mm. we say, you want to be mindful of, of them mm. for sure. So, so I get what you're saying. But it then puts people into a very difficult position where where do you draw the line in terms of talking about mental health, whether it's your own or where I, or, or my work. Because my, 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 I keep talking about my fear, but it, it's not a fear, but my concern will be that we get caught up with this almost PC-like yeah. sort of mentality yeah. that the message just gets lost. You yeah, know? and that you can't get 100% of like, hmm. you know. What because you never know what's going to trigger people. I mean, yeah. that's, that's something I, I, I've, I've learned over my, I think it's going on like five years now, yeah. you know. And what I've learned is, Things that you think may trigger people doesn't trigger people. It's the things that you <laughs> that you don't think is going to yeah. trigger people that ends up triggering a lot of people. Yeah, and I, you know, like what you said. You know, the time constraints may have been a good thing for TV because you didn't want to say too much and then cause this massive storm. But I think it's a good thing to have these conversations because a there's some people that feel like they're going about it alone. And mm. they don't feel the biggest thing with, with when we talk about let, let's talk about the big thing that everyone talks about every mental health awareness week, which is depression, right? Yeah. That that's that's the that is the poster, you know, yeah. diagnosis for mental health awareness week. Yeah. And the biggest part is people feeling that they're alone in this. You know, mm. that no one else can relate to me, no one else can sort of um understand where I'm coming from. Mm. And to a certain degree, yes. I don't think you can a hundred percent empathize with people because everyone is individual Mm. everyone has different upbringings everyone has different sort of experiences Mm. but you can empathize in that someone is going through a very difficult time and that's understating it obviously Mm. and for me having a conversation about how example you know how you have like you mentioned you recently just gone through a dark space but if sort of starting to climb out of it Mm. you know that's the stories that we don't hear yeah, you know we hear, you know, and it, I'll, I'll got my gripe with Mental Health Awareness Week because why do we only need to have it a week? A week, like why? Why? Why does it need to be a week? And why does it only focus on uh, you know a certain amount of yeah. illness when it, it's quite broad? You know. Yeah. So I mean, aside from that, you know, I think especially Pacific males find it very difficult to talk about their feelings. Yeah, you because, know? yeah. Find it very difficult to talk about when they're having a hard time yeah. and when they're struggling. And my, my hope is having podcasts and guests like yourself come in here, talk about their experiences, talk about what they went through yeah. as a way for the others who listen to it, you know, yeah. as limited as the amount of people that listen to this podcast. But you Oh, know, we're blowing this up. This will be on the same level as Joe Rogan. <laughs> I doubt it. We're speaking it into <laughs> existence. <laughs> we're speaking into existence. Will it. We will it into existence. <laughs> but, you know, you know, there's a, there's a guy, there's a podcast guy that I listen to in Australia. And you know his 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 motto is you know if you can impact one person it, it's worth it, yeah. that's that's what's worth it yeah and and that's a very good way of sort of explaining what I'm trying to do you know if, yeah. if one person can sort of go away thinking uh, I've learned something and now I sort of know I'm not alone because other people think like me other people go through similar experiences as me that's a good thing yeah you know so I don't know how much you're willing to share and, and I'm not I'm not going to push you to sort of share anything that you don't want to share mm. but you know I think whatever you sort of are happy to open up about i think is is useful useful mm. because there is going to some there is going to be someone out there mm. who has who can relate you know yeah so i mean do, do you want to i mean tell, tell me tell me what um, you'd like to talk about look can we can we start from the beginning and when you sort of 
sort of identified that maybe you have an, have a problem or an issue? I, I, I literally went through like my entire life, mm. just like not really, you know, ignorance is bliss. Wing, winging it. Yeah, winging, winging it. it. Yeah, like, you know, like, you know that, um, <clears throat> you know, you hear about, what, you, you hear phrases like depression, mental health, all that stuff, but you're like, that doesn't apply to me. I'm I'm not that far crazy. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the label that we put yeah. on there, right? Anyone who sort of yeah. talks about their depressed is like, "Oh, you yeah. crazy? Yeah, can I sell it? Yeah, I see." But I am crazy. <laughs> I don't think it's crazy. I'll take it. The other thing is, I think labels is a very difficult thing. Yeah, you know, because I mean, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, all those stuff, those are heavy burdens those are in heavy. itself. Those are bad. Just just to be. Yeah given that label and yeah. diagnosis is and, and you know luckily for mental health it's one of those things that are evolving and they're trying to move away from labels yeah. because labels make you feel like this is you this well, is yeah. everything about I mean, you that, w- that was exactly it like when I was um, you know my first ever counseling session was because I had missed an exam mm. at uni and I didn't know and I didn't know that I had something going wrong but I just thought, you know, might as well call. And I and I called and booked my first counseling appointment in tears. Mm. I had no idea why. You know, I mm. didn't know why I was in tears. Mm. I don't know why I didn't go to my exam. I don't know, you know, I don't know all these reasons why. You're very disconnected to your emotions yeah. at the time, I'm guessing. Right? Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then I go to my first ever session and I'm, and I'm just like, She's just gonna see right through. Like she'll just be like, "You're right." Yeah, just, dismiss you know, it. Dismiss it. Just like you know, you're right. What we you call, know, it's what like, we call projecting. Yeah, you know, like you want to dismiss it, so you're hoping yeah. she would dismiss yeah. it as well. Yeah, right. So that so that you're hoping that there's nothing. It's not a big problem. Yeah, yeah of course. You know? Here's a pill. Bye. You oh, know, I'm not really. <laughs> Pills are, I think, I think people have too much yeah. faith in pills. Man. Yeah, yeah, but true. But yeah, yeah sometimes it can be helpful for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and then um, what is it? And then you know we sit down, and then like within five minutes of my session, and this is and this is also my friend Malaya's. Sorry, I shouldn't have said her name, um, but this is her experience as well. Like she goes, you know, I didn't know that there was like, and we had very similar experiences. Didn't know mm. that there were like some deep underlying issues. Within five minutes of the session, mm. I'm grabbing the tissues, and I'm like in tears and I didn't know I had all this or like all like I was carrying all this emotional baggage mm. all of this you know mm. and it you know um and I still and I still don't know how to cope with a lot of things I still I still find myself working towards like like working to the point of being burnt out but I am finding, um, but I am finding ways to cope with it. Mm. Um, recently, exercise has been huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, now I've I've just got to find a like a balance between getting enough exercise and being you know productive. Mm. And not burning um, yourself out. As yeah, well at the yeah, same time. I'm burning yeah. myself out. Yeah, because that, that's where I was last week. Mm. I was burnt out. My insomnia was playing up. I, like, for about three days, mm. I probably only got, like, an hour and a half worth of sleep. Shit. And I, that and, is not good. <laughs> and I was literally in the car. Like, mm. I had asked my brother, hey, can you go do the laundry? Mm. Um, and I just, like, kind of slept in the car. And mm. then, um, what is it? Yeah, and I was off to an event Jeez. that night, and then I and I went off. But I think it was a good thing I went to the event because it just kind of like got me out. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't gonna go till I got a text. He's not. He's still coming. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So now that you've texted me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I kind of didn't know there was anything wrong. Mm. Um, not saying that there is anything wrong, but it's just like you don't know that there like these deep issues that you have to confront, mm. and yeah, and then like from there, like from my first few sessions, I was like, oh, phew, we're good, I'm all right, we're all right, yeah, and then 
one night we got you know got a, got a little bit of some of that uh that fire water yeah that crunk juice that crunk juice that's that's an early 2000s yeah, reference for anyone yeah. for anyone who yeah, doesn't know yeah. who little john is mm. um and i try to jump off a bridge wow and and the one thing that saved me is one of the few things that is pissing me off right now is my weight. Mm. If I was able to get my left foot up over the ledge, I would have been could splat that bridge, that Simon Street Bridge. I would yeah. have been at the bottom of that bridge. Um, and, um, you know, and then like afterwards, like, you know, you think, oh, drunk people be drunk, mm. you know. Um, but then, you know, I had to sit down after a while and had like, think about it. I was like, fuck. Mm. Nah, there's something wrong. And then like, you sit down and you have actually have a think about it. You're like, this, this is not the first time I've tried taking my own life. Mm. You know, like that's the first major. Big, yeah. Major event. Major event. But mm. then like thinking back, like, yo, I... I tried to, I I tried like slitting my wrist when I was like seven years old. Wow! I had no idea why. Hmm. And the and the thing that stopped my wrist from being slit there, blunt knife. Hmm. And I remember that day like vividly. Man. Um, I was I remember getting so angry that the knife was blunt. Was it a response um, to something that happened? Was it something that sort of triggered you to sort of... I, 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 I can't remember. Mm. But I was bullied as a kid. Yeah. Um, and then in high school, I, you know, kind of became the bully. I became head asshole sometimes. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. Um, and then now I'm still trying to figure my own situation out um but yeah i think it's um it was eye-opening yeah yeah yeah, very eye-opening because because i didn't know Hmm. like the little behaviors that kind of like it's what we call early warning signs yes the warning signs Mm. exactly before like what is it in a week like the weekend um oh sorry we use this this is an example. During lockdown, I all of, I all of a sudden found myself with quite a bit of work. Mm. Good thing about lockdown is that you have nothing else to do. Yeah. Right? You can be very focused on something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then I found myself with quite a bit of work. Um, but then it got to a point during, I think, probably like the third week of lockdown. Sorry. Mm. Um, I found myself kind of burnt out. Compared to my partner, I don't even know why I should have been burnt out, but compared to the amount of work she was doing. Mm. Um, but uh, what is it? I think it's mostly because I went from doing zero work to doing heaps of to work. To 100. Zero right? to 100 zero is to never good. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Then, um, so then by like probably the third week of lockdown, I was stress eating. Mm. And I did, and you know, I kind of sat, sat back and I was like, oh shit, I'm stress eating. I'm not getting as much work done. I'm procrastinating a little bit. Mm. I'm out of my funk. I need to take a day off. Yeah. And she was so cool with me. You know, I said, Julia, please, like, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just kind of burnt out. I need a day off. And she goes, take it. Mm. Um, yeah. And she was like, you know, it's good that you spotted this before. You know, some deadlines kind of like came hmm. to be. So, so I'm still trying to figure out what those, what those, what, te- what those telltale signs are. Hmm. And um, in the weekend that just passed, I, I did a little bit of stress eating. Hmm. Had no sleep. Hmm. So that's another big one there. Um, yeah. So I'm still trying. Yeah. So it's ongoing. It's a. It's a journey of discovery almost for yeah. you you know yeah, yeah i mean it, thank you for one for for sharing you know like i said i know one thing is not easy to sort of share 
practically a stranger, which is me. That's all good. You know? Yeah. But but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful one because I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate, you know? Mm. The sleep part is, is one of those... That That's one early warning sign a lot of people usually point to. You know, yeah. it's like... It, anyone who sort of doesn't sleep for a period of time straight straight away you know things don't tend to sort of go well for them yeah but it's sort of just backtracking slowly to, to when you started your counseling session mm. was it when you started opening up and talking about what you've been going through that you started to realize that things weren't great yeah yeah when you finally you know open up to a stranger and there's something something yeah. good about opening up to a stranger because yeah. there's no judgments yeah. there's no expectation you know it's just someone you just someone you can just talk to yeah. vent almost offload yeah. did you notice that, is that where you sort of identified shit things are pretty not good right yeah. now yeah 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 i mean and it was what is it because when you have conversation like this with a friend mm. you know it kind of feels, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because, uh, me, you know, we had an agreement with the counselor that, you know, we, this is the date, this is the appointment. I make the appointment, and that, that the setting was right mm. to be able to unload, For and sure. that, um. You know, you wouldn't just normally unload like stuff like this on a friend. Most times. Most times. Um, but even with even with your good good friends, you wouldn't disclose everything. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because yeah, because even with yeah with counselors, there's um, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for here? Privacy. Yeah, there's privacy laws yeah, where they privacy yeah. laws. Whereas with friends, like it doesn't matter how good your friend is. Mm. You know, they might they may get, slip. They might maybe mm. no, no, not intentionally, but yeah. for sure they may yeah. accidentally say something they don't mean. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, no, nah, it just uh, it almost felt like cathartic mm. in a way, just getting it off. Yeah, and then um, you know, continuing to go, but since I've I've kind of like stopped going to uni, mm. I've, I haven't gone back to counselling. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, it was just, yeah, coming to terms and not knowing. Yeah, I think it was like going from not knowing mm. that there was like stuff going on back here. And like, you kind of just feel like, oh, you just dismiss it, it. People tend to that. suppress it and sort of yeah. just try and just distract themselves yeah. from what's actually happening. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, oh, and what is it? I had an appointment with, the, with a psychiatrist one time mm. and they said, oh, you kind of like, this is a psychiatrist of all people, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, you. There's, it doesn't really seem like there's something too bad mm. going on right now. So long as you keep busy, mm. you should be fine. And then I... That's and then bad I, advice. Yeah. And then I kind of took that on board as, all right. Keep yourself fucking busy. Let's get busy. Yeah. Burnt myself the fuck out. Mm. So what they should have said was being busy is good because a it's something temporary that you can distract yourself with. But it's a little bit more than just keeping yourself yeah. fucking busy. There needs to be a certain level of, ref you know, you need to be reflecting on sort of what's happened. There needs to be some self-awareness too. Yeah. But there needs to be an opportunity for you to discuss what's been happening with, with a professional, Yeah, you know. Because a lot of the times, a big reason I, I know why people don't usually talk to their friends is because they want a little bit more than just the, this is what's happening for me. Oh, bro, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. I don't want the sympathy, you know? The sympathy is the yeah. last thing that, that, you know, that anyone wants. Yeah. But what people need, they may not want it at the time, but, but they, they're looking for solutions. Yeah. They're looking for help, you know? Yeah. And to sort of have someone who, A, you don't know, tell you almost in a dismissive sort of way just keep busy bro you know? yeah that is a part of sort of maintaining because keeping busy is good because if you're busy you're not always sitting down in your own head sort mm. of formulating and sort of going over the same negative thoughts all the time keeping busy allows you to sort of distract yourself a little bit you know take your mind off things mm. 
But she always didn't explain about burnout and how that could just doubly impact the negative thoughts and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's one of those things where sometimes, uh, you know, not all psychiatrists, but, you know, some psychiatrists tend to uh, have a, a low threshold, sorry, a high threshold, high threshold for risks. And they just yeah. sort of just like, you know, um, but if you look at, you know, and I, the way that I work, you know, I always look at our Pacifica people. I've got a special interest in our Pacifica people. I don't work in the Pacifica um, area. Yep. I work in mainstream. Yep. But I have more than enough Pacifica people coming through to know what the issues are. Mm. And one of the um, one of the biggest things, they're always hesitant to talk. They're hesitant to sort of let go or, or sort of let people in. And I don't know whether that's because of a of a trust thing or they've never been taught how to do it but it is a significant part of why we have such shit health statistics especially in mental health we just don't we just don't open up well you, you know? know in the wise words of uh, Shrek the Ogre better out than in <laughs> get out them layers <laughs> layers um layers. islanders uh, are like yeah. onions for sure yeah I we mean like layers yeah uh, oh, like even like even yeah, even me with the amount of like counseling sessions that I've had, mm. I feel like I still struggle with that sort of stuff. Of course, you know. So, I feel like yeah, and also like a lot of it could even stem from like what is it, like old men being all tense and stuff. It, you know, it, it's maybe a, we, maybe you could treat them to a spa day. We've used the <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm, I still haven't gotten that far in yeah. terms of, you know, my own masculinity. But uh, uh, but we're sort of conditioned in, in our, especially our Tongan society, where we are sort of told that our emotions are meant to be in check. Yeah. And it's weakness yeah. to sort of say, I'm not doing okay. Because there's an expectation for us to get the shit done. No, get yeah. shit done. Don't. There's no time to piss around. You go to Uta, you know. Yeah. You, you can't say, "Oh, I'm a bit sad today." Mahalo, yeah, you, 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 yeah. you know. So, from a, from an early age, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I don't like putting labels on it, but you know, there is that um, oh, that stupid fucking word that goes around like toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. Like I agree and disagree with a, a lot of that stuff, but mm. there there is a, a certain aspect where I do agree where we don't teach, especially young boys, about how to express their emotions and yeah. talk about what's actually going on. Yeah, because we do have, especially in New Zealand, you know, we do have this harden up culture where, yeah, if a kid falls down and he's crying, don't don't cry, don't cry. Yeah, get, get up, be a man. Yeah, get the fuck up. You know. Yeah, and. That can be helpful in, in certain settings, yeah. you know, when if it's do it, let's, let's, let's go to the extreme and talk about the army, right? You, you can't mm. fuck around and say, I'm sad in the middle of war. Yeah. You, you need to be focused. You need to be able to be resilient, get yep. shit done. But there's a reason why when people who come back from war are all fucked up all fucked because up. of trauma, yep. you know, and it still carries on because they don't know how to, you know, offload. They don't know yep. how to express their feelings and talk about their issues and their trauma. So it's something, you know, and I don't know where to begin with that. You know, do we, you know, continue to talk about awareness and, and, and sort of hope that one day our people will get it and sort of be more supportive of, of our children? I don't know. You know, mm. because as far as I can see, someone who's working in, oh, I was about to call the industry. I don't know if you can call working in mental health an industry, but I work in mental health. And year in, year out, statistics are still shit. So mm. I, don't, I, I don't know personally, as someone who works knee deep in it all. I don't know what the way forward is, you know, but people like who, who've been in your situation before, hopefully can identify what has been helpful. So for you, I know counseling was something that allowed you to sort of be more aware that, 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 that something was not right. Mm. But you haven't been to counseling, like you said, you haven't been to uni, you haven't been going to counseling. What sort of has been things that you've been able to do for yourself that has been helpful to get you over these dark periods well considering that this time last year like 80% 80 percent of last year I spent in a dark patch mm. straight straight from burnout like mm. I like what is it? I literally took the advice of 
you know, that psychiatrist, and mm. I ran with it. Like, yeah. you know, December, January, February, March 2019, I was doing the work that a team of like six or seven people should be doing. I was doing it by myself because I just wanted to be busy. You weren't fucking about when you they told you to keep busy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. Because I, cause I just couldn't. Mm. And then at the end of it all, my my career was kind of in shambles. My mind was in shambles. My relationship with my family was like. Mm. So, so I spent most of last year trying to repair that. Um, picked up a few gigs here and there where I could. But I spent most of last year just sitting in my room, just mm. terrified of the world. You know, posting stuff here and there, but I was just. So then, what yeah. changed? Could that, could that, to me, you know, you being able to be here today and you sort of going up on Tanaka Pacifica and sort of being more open. What, what sort of, what sort of caused that change and or that shift in mentality? Um. I think lockdown. Hmm. Um. Lockdown is what happened, and just before lockdown, I was already kind of doing my little fitness thing from my couch. Like, I literally started on my couch. Mm. Um, but it was um, because I was struggling to breathe. Mm. And I was like, fuck, I might actually die. And then I realized, I'm petrified of dying. <laughs> Even as ironic I, as that yeah, is, right? For someone who tried to sort of commit even though, suicide. Yeah, even yeah. though I've been trying to freaking off myself how many times <laughs> and thinking about offing myself. Because mm. um, most of the time it's it's an impulsive decision because it sounds yeah. like eight years, seven. You can't really sort of say you tried to kill yourself because you, you don't really know what you're doing at seven. Yeah. You know, most of the time you're running on pure emotion anyway. Yeah. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously. I'm just analyzing from an objective view. But the, mm. the time you tried to jump off the bridge, you were drunk. I was drunk. So a lot of the time, people who are drunk, of course, fuck, how many times have you guys all had to drink in a garage and started crying about yeah. something stupid? Like, I can't yeah. believe Ninji died in the Great Ninja War. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck the Naruto people. Yeah. But, Sorry, spoilers out there for anyone who isn't watching the Great Ninja War but, for Naruto. <laughs> yeah. But then you... But, Sorry. Yeah, but then you wake up in the morning and you're just like, oh, you know, like, mm. oh. Once, <laughs> once, once you sort of... But then, get over that period of, of, of I, impulsivity and, and darkness. M- m- majority of the time, not all the time, you know. Um, people do sort of reflect back, like, whoa, yeah, what the fuck just happened? Well, well, well it took me, like, yeah. like, what is it? I I first laughed it off. Like, That's a common island yeah, way to sort of laugh off like, trauma. What is it? Yeah, like, what is it? I laughed it off. Like, my mate came and picked me up from the cells because the cops took me in that night. Mm. And I go, and he go. And he goes, bro, what happened? You're in the cells. And I go, yeah, I tried to jump off a bridge and kill myself. Ha <laughs> ha. And he goes, yeah, like, I literally went like that. Like, I laughed. Yeah. And he goes, that's not funny, bro. Like, yeah. And I, and, and you know, I was just like, oh, you know, whatever. Mm. And I went home, nat, you know, crashed out, got yeah. some floods in me. And I, you know, woke up and I was like, I can't believe what just happened. Yeah. You know, like, I may have been drunk, but it kind of brought everything up to the surface. What alcohol tends to do is uh, lower whatever barriers or inhibitions that you had. So, I mean... What is it? What, a drunk, 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 what, drunk heart? Drunk words speak a sober mind or something? Yeah, Um, yeah. We tell real shit when we drunk. Yeah. For sure, you know? Um, But it also brings to light a lot of the stuff we suppress. Yeah. You know? Um... Alcohol is a sedative, you know, yeah. it, it releases all your inhibitions and your sort of control over your thoughts and, and everything. Yeah. And once those floodgates, if you're already struggling before that, yeah. you know, and then once those floodgates go, it's literally a fucking flood of emotion and pain yeah. and trauma. And what do you do with that? I, I, can, I can understand and empathize for how you got from point A to point B, mm. which is, you know, from drinking to the fucking bridge on Simon Street. Yeah. You know, but, you know. Are you a religious person? You go to church? Yeah. I mean, not because we've been indoctrinated get, since we're yeah. children. But I mean, <laughs> do you do you believe? <laughs> I, do I believe uh, that Grand Zeno is the <laughs> ruler of the omniverse? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We 
definitely going to hell for that yeah, one. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the, we're going I mean, to white people hell for because that because a lot of the time, you know, I, I, because I work in 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 mainstream and we are driven, unfortunately, through medical model. A lot yeah. of the time, we we dismiss the spiritual side, and I'm not talking about spirituality. I mean, it, spirituality can be anything, um, you know. But do you think two 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 attempts that, that that you've shared with today? And freak ways of things not turning out that the way that they've turned out or possibly could have turned out, yeah. you know, and which has allowed you to be here today. Yeah. Do you think there's some uh, divine intervention that sort of happened there to sort of? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think so. I think uh, big man upstairs might have uh, something planned for me. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. Or it could be just freak roll of the dice. Depends on what you believe yeah, in, and so your perspective you on on the world. I yeah, guess. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I pray. Yeah, um, I pray when I need I... something, which is really bad, <laughs> which is really bad. But I thought, listen, we're all being honest here. You know, <laughs> but um, but but you know, as soon as something good happens, the first thing I say, like as, um, even though it might seem like a bad impulse, because I might be saying his name in vain. Mm. But I'm always like, you know, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. You know, like, you know, and, and it's just my go to impulse as someone who was indoctrinated, as you said. Yeah, yeah. By, uh, go to church or get disciplined. Good old, <laughs> good old free Wesley in church. I was talking. Oh, Catholic for me, man. <laughs> oh, Catholic? Yeah, brother. See, at least these guys had real wine. <laughs> yeah, I think that shit was watered down, eh? Yeah. Oh, you want to see watered down? We drink Ribena at our church. Ribena. Yeah, Ribena. Get that vitamin, Get vitamin C. C. Well, it's the ones that actually had vitamin C in it, eh? not the ones that uh, when mm. the school actually tested. Like, there's zero school, vitamin C in here. Trash. It's tr- <laughs> row, row. <laughs> listen, at the end of the day, if it's blessed, it's blessed. If it's blessed, it's blessed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, that's a very difficult topic to talk about, but I think there's a yeah. lot of amazing things that that's happened and it's good to hear that you're fighting the good fight you know as difficult as that may be from time to time and mm. you know i know when people sometimes people wake up in the morning and they don't want to get out of bed mm. it's that i'm gonna try you know it's trying to put the effort in and, and seeing yeah. you know hope hope is a big thing yeah. you know hope that things will get better in the future and hope that tomorrow will be a better day yeah you know is a big driver for a lot of that stuff and yeah. it sounds like that's sort of what you're running on yeah, I mean, like, literally right now, my, like, new addiction is making sure to get to that damn Fale Dojo. I see that. I see. Um, you know, oh, like, your victory dances at yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little victory dances. We've run out of dances to do with kettlebells, so we're going to try and find a few more. But um, what is it? Shout I've, out to Fale Dojo, man. Yeah, yeah. shout out to, uh, to the underboss, Bad Luck Fale, for letting me... Um, Record my TikToks in the gym. <laughs> um, but it's... What is it? I'm just so hooked on, like, those endorphins that you get. Mm. As soon as, you know, like... I, like, I still suffer from waking up in the morning and not wanting to do a thing. Mm. Waking up in the morning and just... Feeling completely useless. Mm. Like... I still suffer from a lot of that. Yeah. But when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, damn, you know, like my life, like days just feel like shit. Mm. Oh, wait, we got training. You know, in the beginning when we first, when we had our first session at Fale Dojo, sorry, mm. um, it was my brother. Like I was low key hoping that he would come home and completely forget that we were going to go. And he comes home and goes, yo, are we going to go training? And I was like, Get your ass up. We going. Fine. <laughs> now I'm the one annoying him. To go what a to change. The gym. Yeah. I mean, like, they <laughs> stare at me like that. <laughs> I, I, Oi, did I not wake you up this morning to go training? And then we get to training. You sleep in the car. Ooh, throwing the brother under the bus <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I'm throwing, throwing him under <laughs> the bus. I'll throw him under the bus. <laughs> I forget. I do this thing called work. <laughs> I work too, but I work with my mind. Yeah, that break. No other way you're going to break down. Wow, wow. Let's keep this going. <laughs> it's good to have a sibling to sort of uh, yeah. bounce uh, emotions off. Yeah, you know, but keeping you grounded yeah. at the yeah. same time, which is always helpful. Yeah, we, yeah. Like you said, we have a funny way of sort of showing our emotions, where we th- we we treat it as a joke. 
You yeah. know, we always laugh about it. We laugh off, off everything, but... It, it, it's in a, such in a, a thing to do. In, in a good way, it's it's us trying to normalize. Because we love to fucking laugh. We think everything's funny. We see yeah. someone get died outside. Oh, we'll yeah, laugh we'll first laugh. and then help after. Yeah. You know, but see a car crash. We'll kind of laugh first and then hopefully yeah. no one's died. You know? Yeah. But it, it's a way of us trying to normalize what is something, like, what's a very serious, yeah. serious, serious topic, you know, or, yeah. or a serious event that's happened. Um, And that's, I mean, laughing about it is, is one thing, you know, but I think we do need to normalize not sort of the actions and stuff that I think we need to be aware that this could be a potential thing that could happen but normalize that people go through hard times yep. and things aren't always fucking perfect yeah obviously right but we're sort of caught up and this kind of goes back to sort of vlogging and social media where people portray their lives are amazing yeah they put know? on this front they put on the front with that is amazing and that further draws people who aren't having a good time who aren't sort of who don't feel that they're sort of in this sort of world that like who the f- what the fuck is this person doing yeah. to make them so happy and why am I so miserable? Which is why Instagram got rid of the whole like info. count on the you know how many likes you like get count. on each photo. Yeah, like that. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I'm, I'm late to the show with all these uh, with all this shit. <sighs> yeah, that's know? that's that's the, the main show. reason why they're like let's get rid of it because it's doing bad stuff to the mental health of our which is good. It's it's a good thing for sure. You know. But I think that's a it's, it's a band aid. I think it's a band aid because at the end of the day, people are still posting up a life that is most likely not what's what's really happening for them. Yeah, you know, it's it's a poor portrayal of of what's happening in real yeah. life, and I think that stems down deeper to. And, and I had a long conversation. I think I had like a two hour forty minute conversation with um, my last guest, and because a lot of what he's doing is talking about social media, the negative impacts, and the addiction side of things. Yeah, and. You know, we talked about how difficult it is to sort of reconcile that your life is not as good as this person that you're watching on, yeah. on Instagram. It's like or, comparing yourself. Yeah. And and that's a tough one because we can't help but compare ourselves to your neighbor. You can't help but compare yourself to people that you see. I, th- I think it's a natural human reaction where we try and sort of balance things. It's yeah. so it's so it's such an old thing that it's in the Tinkle Moments, man. <laughs> Thou shall not want. Yes. I, I'm struggling to figure it. Like, yeah. when you said Ten Commandments, like, shit, <laughs> damn it, which commandment is he talking about? I didn't even know which commandment, but it's like you can't, you can't covet want, you something. can't covet anything from someone's your neighbor. Ass, yeah. Someone's ass. Someone's ass. Someone's ass, someone's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no coveting and no ass. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. in the, in, in, God. Um, the, yeah, that's. <laughs> but yeah, um, what is it? It's, yeah, nah, it's so weird. Like, that's one thing. I, I, I can't, even though I tell like little like white lies and stuff to people, mm. but you know, there's, oh. the, my main thing was that, what is it? When I first started going to the gym mm. was that I noticed that my, my t-shirt would like go up mm. and show my belly. Now I don't care mm. because if I put it on my videos, if I put it anywhere, mm. that's 100% me. Mm. You know, you don't want to see my belly. There's Fuck other off, people yeah, you can go yeah, watch. Yeah. You know, but this is this is the reality. It is you know for people who are morbidly obese, mm. find it difficult to find clothes, and still want to get out there and change themselves. You know, if I can do it, belly out and everything, mm. your ass can get out there and do it too. And I think that's why it's um, it's such a powerful you know um movement that you're doing i don't know if it you meant to, for it to be a movement but it's something that a lot of people are following you know they're, yeah. they're sort of seeing all the effort and then the, the the sweat the tears you know the struggles that you've been getting not to mention yeah. you're pretty active and explaining yourself about you know how your day's going yeah you know um but it's also very as i mentioned earlier it's very genuine you know and people and that comes across very clear in in your vlogs and, and the things you're recording yourself because it's from my, from what I can see, it's not about being vain. It's not about you know um, selfish reasons. There's probably some selfish reasons. Yeah. Like we, we, you can't go a day without doing something selfish for yourself. Yeah. Um, but a majority of it is for, may for motivation for others and maybe for well, yourself too. You know. Yeah, I mean, like to be honest, I initially started it so that I can keep myself accountable. Mm. You know, like what is I could have I could have done it. And just, um, 
and just like kept it on a hard drive and go back and watch it. But it's like, it's not hitting me in my face. Mm. You know, if I have it on my TikTok, if I have it on my Instagram, whenever I go to check a notification, if I didn't do that set, Mm. if I didn't do that, you know, and then during lockdown, I had a conversation, oh, just after lockdown, you know, when I started it all, my friend goes, you know, like, I know you and you've kind of, what is it, needed some people just like to just kind of like give you that energy to mm. kind of just like um, egg you on. Mm. And I was like, Dean, you're so right. Like, I didn't know. I was, I, I was more or less doing it for this. Mm. But it turned out to be this. And now it's become this. And I'm like, mm, let's just see where this goes. If this, if this ends up with a Nike sponsorship, <laughs> hurrah. Just, just remember me as well. Yes. I'm size 12, Air Max Jordans. 95s. <laughs> All right. Free Jordans for everyone. You on Jordans? <laughs> Jordan's all Jordan's Jordan's all around. Oh, you're wearing Converse. That's all right. Nike owns Converse. You can get some of that too. Yeah, Nike, <laughs> Nike also owns owns slaves. So I guess you know, yeah. maybe Nike's not the right yeah, <laughs> right avenue Nike's. to go down. Reebok, maybe Reebok. Reebok will be the but Reebok is owned by Eddie there. So. Is it too? Oh yeah. shit! So, yeah. Blue Deer. <laughs> Let's hit let's hit the let's hit the sponsorship the OGs, from Blue Deer. Blue Deer Bro. If you're listening. Listen, Blue Deer in this house is covered today. Eh? Like if, if you come back from Tonga like it's so, so hard to find yeah. Blue Deer in Tonga now. Oh, it's not man. there. I don't know whether they're out of business or they're just not importing it or but it's oh. Blue Deer is the this the Tongan is, uniform. It's the epitome. The epitome of, of slippers, man. Yeah. Or jandals. If or whatever you, yeah. whatever people fucking call it these yeah. days. If you if you were <laughs> yeah, no word from our sponsors, Blue Deer. <laughs> Blue Deer. Do you hate walking with no shoes? Are you tired of lacing up? Well, put Ooh, on these motherfucking slippers we'll and shut up. Look, look no further. <laughs> <laughs> so, we kind of, um, we're sort of going around, um, sort of touching a bit on topics and then expanding. So, we talked about the Mental Health Awareness Week, right? And I got into a really deep conversation with someone about um, the difference between awareness and action you know my gripe and i sort of said it earlier my gripe with mental health awareness week is a we always do it for one week i was like well i'm pretty sure people have issues all year round yeah. why can't we acknowledge it all year round that's one but all they do is awareness yeah you know so me and my wife have many many debates about this um where you know and, and i can see your point and i can see everyone's point but it's the same thing. I don't know how you feel about the 25 push-up thing. I, I started doing it. No, no, no. And like, again, it's going to sound like I'm shitting on people. Yeah. And I probably am. But I don't mean to. Yeah. But I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the awareness side of things. Yeah. All right? I don't believe awareness in itself changes shit. Personally. Action changes. I think action. I think awareness is important. I think awareness is the first step for change. Yeah. But what you see, and the 25 push-up high, highlights it, you know, and I'm not shitting on the pe- people's intentions of why they're doing it. Mm. I'm just speaking from someone who knows the data and sees it on the ground. Yeah. And because you know something is happening, doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to change. Yeah. We know that we have the worst statistics in whatever measurement you want to point out mm-hmm. as PIs, just under Maori, yep. you know, yep. poverty, whatever the fuck you want to point out. We know this. What's changing because we know it? Mm. O- almost nothing. Yeah. So what I'd like to see is let's let's not promote awareness. Let's promote things that we can actually we can do. action. You yeah. know. And and you know I just I mean because that's a controversial topic in itself. Yeah. You know because the guy that I was talking with he got hit up by so many people around what you know about what he said and sort of like what he was trying to say, but it still rings true. You know, mm. for people who do go through similar situations as you, you know, um, people with schizophrenia and all that stuff, they don't want you to know only about what's happening. Knowing it is a good yeah. thing, but that needs to, that's the foundation of building on what's the next step. And we don't usually take that next step, you know? Yeah. Before, like, and, and, I'll, and I'll use you as an example. Before you sort of, you know, came to this realization that things weren't going well, you knew about mental health. Yeah. You knew about depression. Yeah. You knew about people and, and suicide and all that stuff. Yeah. 
what good did it do you knowing on, on a personal level not, not a lot no I, I would guess right like you like again you're aware of it but mm. you're not doing anything mm. yeah and that's sort of where i you know this is where i a little bit of my gripes you know i'm almost feel like starting a segment like um like family guy with like what grinds my gears you know and i mm. just talk just like me 30 minutes to talk about things that mm. <laughs> really annoy me mm. but um it's I, I want people to realize that you know like i think people can be more impactful with the resources that they have and when i think about resources is their time yeah if you're willing to do 25 push-ups maybe donate your time to work with an ngo for like half a day yeah. something you know yeah. something tangible something in, that's actionable yeah and, and i think that'll go a long way you know yeah awareness we've done to death literally you know we've, we've done awareness how many years now since the awareness mm. campaign come through i think it would be more impactful if people a can do something in their own lives reach out to a friend reach out to a family member that may be struggling but also if you don't have that available maybe donate your time you know if yeah. you really wanted to help yeah you know because and, and don't post about it yeah you know? i mean that i mean that, that's another thing about me I mean, like yeah. uh, it, uh, the awareness part of that is because it turns it, it sort of is more of a reflection on them it's a selfish thing for them yeah and, and, and i'm goes, being general yeah. obviously and it goes yeah yeah and i can hella relate to that it goes back to people mm. who do the whole i just gave 20 dollars <laughs> when i was 20 dollars yeah Yep, I think yeah. I saved a life oh, by donating twenty dollars. Yeah, electronic like. Yeah, I mean, um, that, but here's I think, your validation. I will say, I think donating twenty dollars is still more more yeah. helpful than twenty five push ups. Yeah, but I, but but the, you, I'm you guilty because I did the twenty five push ups. Yeah, I still yeah. haven't finished it though. But but the point, but it's. <laughs> He's not gonna do it now. I'm not doing now. I got bad knees, man. Jeez, you're so mean, bro. What the fuck. <laughs> But, you know, but like, but it's highlighting a point, you know, and like I said, I'm not shitting on people's intentions because yeah. I know people's intentions are, are good. You know, a lot of my friends did it. You know, I'm still waiting for them to hit me. I was like, what the fuck did you just say? You're lucky I'm in fucking Europe. I'm fucking fly over and meet the shit up. You're like, well, you must be angry because it must be true. But, you know, it's, it's, it, it becomes slightly of a selfish thing. And I, and I know it's not intentional, but it yeah. does, but you know, it does turn out to be that way, you know? Mm. It's it's a it's an interesting um, thought, I yeah. guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, even I'm at a at a crossroads about it. About mm. like you know how I can not only raise awareness but also action. You know, action. Yeah. So my yeah my action is coming up soon. Don't but worry. I, but I like, think I feel like I mean, and it's not and that's mm. not because as a reaction mm. to the conversation that we've been having mm. but it's just something that you know i had signed up to a while back but i just haven't really mm. you know i might as well say it now um what is it because i signed up to do the half marathon right the auckland half marathon i still nice. haven't done any training um can you train for a marathon oh, <laughs> we've got to condition the body somehow um, oh, shit true yeah I, so, yeah i'm not a cardio fan so, so okay neither am yeah. i but that's pretty good though that's yeah. something actionable but like w one of the first things i did as as you can sign up um is that you can register to run for a charity mm. and i just instantly went mental health. health yeah you know that'll be my little bit of action right mm. there and i did you know i just kind of did it then and now as we're having this conversation i'm like mm. maybe you know you know what fuck it i'm gonna do it yeah. yeah i mean like you know we already paid a hundred odd dollars to run oh, to run across that harbor bridge so might as well you know put it out there and yeah. start my fundraising i think you're gonna do it i don't think this podcast and you, you didn't need to come on this podcast to sort of do it i think you're mm. gonna do it already but even before that i think what you're i think your vlogs in a way is an action you know because when you see the people who do 25 push-ups where where are they now what are they doing now mm. i mean i mean now that the trend is gone yeah, the trend is gone. Where, where, where's all the awareness people now? But I think for you, because it's so personal to yourself, you're you, you're documenting your journey. Yeah, which is a rare thing because usually we have you know obviously talking about mental health on a podcast is nothing new. Yeah, there's plenty of ones out there. Maybe not a lot for Pacifica, but there is some out there. Yeah, but I think it's very rare do we see a Pacifica male vlogging and documenting the journey 
being very very open, putting their heart out there for the public, for the for the thousands of people that watch it, mm-hmm. and, and showing the progress. You know, to to me that that's that I said it earlier, and I'm very bad at uh at complimenting people, so I do apologize. But it is it is I don't do it often because I didn't receive any this growing is, up. So I don't not, know how it's this done. This is this is not good for my ego. <laughs> no, I, I think I think it needs to be stroked slightly because I do think you're doing good. I do think so. I do yeah. think you know sharing your story and, and putting yourself out there normalizes a, a lot of of the difficulties people do you know experience on a day to day basis. Mm. And I hope more people follow you they see what you're going through and think oh i i i'm similar you know yeah and if you know if you saw can do it i have no excuse they you know the chair. <laughs> yeah you know? and i want to do that too yeah you know so I, I do think you're doing a lot of good you know you you're being you're being too modest on yourself you know which is another islander trait that we yeah. need to evolve from we need to be like those white guys and sort of just shout it to the rooftops yeah. i'm still very guilty i I don't even tell anyone at my work that I do a podcast at what? all. I don't. So the guy that's coming who's from my work, yeah. he's a Samoan guy. Yeah. I told him, don't you fucking tell anyone, okay? <laughs> this is between me and you. If they stumble ac- across it, cool. Yeah, cool. But I am not going to walk around and say, bro, I'm doing a podcast because yeah. who the fuck am I? V- very similar to you. Like yeah. um, that imposter syndrome is like, I've done 12 episodes. Yipty fucking do. Yeah. But I do think... Because people have just not a lot, but you know, there had the few people that have reached out have talked about the the certain topics that isn't heard as frequently. Yeah, you know, I'm nothing special. You know, there's, there's a bunch of guys that do podcasting and girls that do podcasting. Mm. I think Harriet's doing a podcast now. Yeah, she she's doing one with um, make your feet. <laughs> she <laughs> she she's doing one with um, some of the Pacifica creators. I'm still waiting for my invite. Yeah, we're not going to talk about well, that right now. <laughs> Harriet, if you've made it this far into the podcast, made, he saw us waiting for his I'm invite. I'm waiting for my invite. You know, I, I don't know what I want to talk. I'm going to tag all these people that we're talking about <laughs> in this podcast. Hey. We, 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 we're Joe talking Rogan, about Joe Rogan, you. If you're Joe Rogan. Us. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind if you funded this for a couple yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah. with some of the Spotify money. <sighs> oh, uh, that is stupid money. Oh. Speaking of moving to fucking Spotify, yeah, stupid money. Like he was making a fuck ton of money before that, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, but it's an interesting move, you know, because YouTube. I don't know how how much you follow sort of YouTube dramas and the yeah. sort of oh, um, it's the censorship, the free speech on, stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the censorship things, like, and, and and I think it's starting to come back. I think I think it's starting to come back and bite them in the ass now. Yeah. Because I remember when YouTube first came out, and it was just about you could freedom. Anything on YouTube, mm. but the internet—it it was like a place where anyone who had something to say or wanted yeah. to do something, even if it was so un PC, yeah. you could do it. You know, you could ignore it if it, you didn't like it, or mm-hmm. the people—you know—people will follow it if they're, you know, if they're that well, way inclined. Well, that's because the internet's become mainstream now. Yeah, yeah and I, I hate that. Everyone's eh? on it. Like I remember back then, man. Like some of these auto tune remixes to some of these memes were terrible like not like terrible in quality but it would just like take something and just oh destroy it destroy something oh god you know like some of these old memes Mm. like you know these new memes now bro those are nothing man when vine was still a thing vine was still a thing yeah man oh man yeah and 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 i'm um i'm gonna say concerned but I, i feel sad as well because I watch a lot of my. I'm like everyone else who gets all their information from YouTube, especially conspiracy theories. <laughs> but but you know, I mean, there's a lot of intelligent people who do post up really interesting debates, topics. People yeah. just. But you know, a lot of that stuff is being taken down because someone's offended by you know because someone doesn't agree that there's more than two genders, or maybe yeah. someone you know, um, is you know something you know. There's always something that's going to offend someone. You yeah. Know? And they've moved away from being this medium of, of freedom of freedom of speech and is now turned into this echo chamber of people who, you know, depending on, on where, where your sort of beliefs lie, yeah. beliefs lie, yeah. you know, it becomes almost like an echo chamber just saying that thing. And yeah. that's not a good thing, you know. It's yeah. not a good thing at all. Because you want to be exposed to different different opinions and, yeah, and different... Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, that's how, you know, 
that's how fires are created, you know, friction, mm. you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I thoroughly enjoy hearing both sides of an argument, mm. even if I don't like the other side. Like, I enjoy watching Donald Trump videos because I find them entertaining. Bro, like, I f- he is the most polarizing and entertaining motherfucker on this planet uh, yeah, right now. Right now. Yeezy's getting up there, though. Uh, Did you see his yeah, love is his cam- yeah. his first campaign video? Yeah, but I'm torn about Yeezy though because I know. Oh no, he'll be a shit president. Like, or well, well, not even that, but I feel like, come on, Kim, not man. Was, not that he was in the run, yeah. but <laughs> Kim, man, you gotta look after your husband, man. Like, come on, I think man. I think I Kim like... bit off more than she can chew. If you look at uh, all her past relationships, she kind of ran the show. But Yeezy, nah, 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 he don't fuck that shit up for oh, sure, man. But that, but that was hilarious. Did you watch his um his the the videos that's come out of his ca- latest campaign and he's I've sort watched, of in I've watched bits and tears. pieces. Yeah, and, and he's tears. just unintelligibly trying to say shit, and you just no fucking clue yeah. what's happening. And he's standing there in a bulletproof vest. In a bulletproof vest. Yeah. He says security on it. I don't, yeah. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand what America is turning into. It's oh. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, can't you can you... make money on Spotify? No, yeah. wait. What you're talking about? Something else here, mate. But yes, yes to both. Yes, yes to both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, nah, it's crazy times we're living in. Absolutely. And I remember as soon as uh, COVID popped off, some of my cousins who were like, who were really religious, mm. were already oh, like no. saying, the end is nigh. There are locusts in Africa. Uh. There are people dying. The markets are crashing. Gay people can get married. <laughs> Abortion is legal. <laughs> These are all the telltale signs that the end is nice. Yes. And I was literally sitting there thinking, people back in 1918 were saying the same thing. Exactly. People back when the bubonic plague was popping off were saying the same thing. Mm. Like the end and, of the Mayan like, calendar, everyone yeah. was saying. The yeah, same end of the Mayan thing. calendar. But but this is like you know, call me like what is it? We'll go back to religious and be like, oh, you're just a bad. Like you have no faith. But I'm like, I'm just using history mm-hmm. you yeah. know like so, why, why is it different now as opposed to a hundred other instances yeah. which is very similar yeah you know i mean they they say like god oh, this is the worst the world has ever yeah, been and well, due to covid i was like well mm. the black plague was pretty fucking bad yeah. you know the, yeah. the spanish flu it was, was really bad. fucking world bad was pretty world bad. war Two. they compared to saying it was worse yeah. than world war Two. it was like oh because you stay home yeah. for six weeks and you can't get your Starbucks, yeah. Now it's the end of the world, right? At least you know. At least, uh, at least we're able to have, sit here, have this conversation, yeah, of course, and not wear masks because it's I don't know. Depending on all these people, that everyone is coming back. <laughs> we might have to bring yeah. out the mask sooner or later. But you're right. We're very lucky. So we are sitting from a, a buzzword I'm going to use, a, a place of privilege. Yes. Yeah, because we are very lucky to. Um, have dealt with it so well you know or now, or or because crazy jacinda and her free masonic <laughs> all of it her Are free you? masonic <laughs> illuminati <laughs> globalist agenda oh no not the free world not the one world this is oh, it God. this is it we've come to the climax we've come to the climax so of this the is podcast this is what this is what it's all been building to and we just want to expose jacinda for being one of the leaders in the illuminati i mean the evidence speaks she's for itself it's, the evidence speaks for itself hey she's white she's white you know is there any more evidence you need Probably not. <sighs> well, for real though, she did. She did earn like a scholarship from the Freemasons. Yeah, that's weird. The Freemasons. I, I didn't. Wish, I didn't. I didn't realize that though. I wish the Freemasons would give me a scholarship. Bro, I'd take anyone's yeah, scholarship. I'd take anyone's yeah. scholarship. You know. You know, like, for, <laughs> like I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into it for all of like the. You know, the child. Like the, the blood drinking, the blood drinking and, and all that and stuff. Yeah, the, the ceremonies, the satanic like, stuff. Stay from satanic from stuff. I'll stay away from that. Just. Give me the money. I don't think that's how it works, brother. No, I th- come on, man. I think you, you take it as a whole, I think. Look at look at look, look at Denzel Washington, all right? He's the most honest man in all of Hollywood. Two Oscars. Mm. Hasn't yeah. been caught up in any drama, right? Yeah. But Will Smith, how many entanglements? <laughs> <laughs> the entanglements are real. Bro. 
Oh, I, I feel bad for Will, or, or Will boy. He, that, he looks the, like he's the, pain, the face that he made when she says, "Oh, yeah," I was, and then I got into entanglement with August, and he's looking at us like, "You fucking what, bitch? You're in a fucking what?" Oh. <laughs> he, oh, one of the one of the greatest actors of our generation, mm. getting his heart pulled out, pulled out in front, of, like, wait, style. Just, I don't know if you know, but what is that? set up that they've got Did, have they started like a it's, podcast have they started a, a red show ta- it's a red table talk so what's that about so it's really a place for um jada pinkett smith to um try and emasculate men. <laughs> <laughs> emasculate men how dare uh, she um what is it honestly i you know what i'm just gonna shoot off my own unpopular opinion here 50% of that show can just get in that bin, bro. <laughs> Straight up. And now the 50%? You know what? Yeah. Well, that's the 50% you know, that he agrees you know, with. Like, you, know, you know, the reason why I still watch is because I enjoy hearing the other side of the argument. Jada's or, or, or Will? It's just, either or. you know, whoever's on the show. But It's about know, the relationship? Is it, is it purely no, about the relationship? Oh, it's, so, it's so, so much red, more. So red table talk is like all like different, different sorts of like. Okay. Um, so were they invited onto this, or is this something that they started? No, so so Jada Pinkett Smith started red table talk. So it's just red essentially like conversations among women, and then it turned into like having like I think Snoop Dogg was on it, mm. or, and they got Snoop because Snoop Dogg called um, you know Snoop Dogg called out um. What's her name? Gail, Gail King. Okay. Oprah's bestie for trying to like get one of the like, tra- you know how like journalists ask questions that are a bit sus. Right. You know, and she tried to ask one of Kobe's mates, you know, like, oh, you know, oh, what about Kobe and his rape allegations and all that stuff, you know, after he had died. Um, And this is what, you know, and then Snoop Dogg jumped on and was like, Gail Kim, you trifling ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, caught her out. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, Snoop Dogg, I want your level. Yeah, man. And then I think Snoop appeared on Red Table Talk. I was like, you know what? I could have appeared better. You know, I was, like, yeah. I was caught up in a moment. You know, he wasn't high when he called out Gail. That's probably why. Yeah, and then now he's yeah. on Red Table Talk. He's yeah. But then, Red, um, table yeah. Red Table Talk. Red Table Talk. You know what? And I, could, and I probably could have all my facts wrong right here. But you know what? Who it's cares? all about learning, brother. Yeah. It's all about learning. But then, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But when uh, when when all that happened, I was like, man, you know, Red Table Talk started off with good intentions, and now it's become toilet. I don't know. With Hollywood, I don't trust the fucking thing that they do. I to, yeah. to me, it sounds like they are desperately trying to remain relevant and in front of a camera. Yeah. Um, because that's all they know. Yeah. Right. That that's all they know. So because of COVID, no one's acting. No one's making new movies. Well, Where's my attention? Yeah, well, Red Table Talk's been running quite a while. Has it? Yeah. See how behind I am on the the Hollywood gossip I'm and so, shit. I'm I I only know like this much. Okay. So let's like, shout out to Philip DeFranco. Yeah, <laughs> bro, he he explains a lot of shit so well. Yes. Back in the day, I don't know. Were, were you sort of following like um the Keemstar drama back in the day? Back in the day, was back. it the Keemstar with uh, Fussy Tube? Fusi Tube, Leafy, oh, all leafy. these. Yep. Yeah, I, I just I have no investment in any of them, but the dramas was hilarious. But yep. Philip DeFranco, Philip DeFranco, he has this way of just breaking down shit yep. that you thought you couldn't understand because it was too big. Yeah. He's very good at explaining yep. himself. He's awesome. I haven't seen any of his videos. Is he still on YouTube? Yeah. Is he still doing shit? He's, oi, that dude, <laughs> Philip DeFranco, yeah. and Trevor Noah are my two main sources. <laughs> Of information. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Philip DeFranco, Trevor Noah, probably not so much. Not, not Trevor Noah? I, I think he's funny, but I think he's also very one-sided. If I wanted mm. a leftist view on things, for sure, he's, he's mm. pretty good at it. But but like like most things, you, yeah. you need to take both sides. I, I, I enjoy Trevor Noah because, well, he's just funnier than all he's the funny, other. He's funny, bro. He's funnier he's, than all the other. He's nightmares. definitely funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 puts which like, is tricky yeah. because he brings you in because he's funny, and then yeah. you realize I don't actually like what you said, but you're funny yeah. as fuck. I'll go with yeah. it. He yeah, put, he puts guys like Jimmy Fallon's a shame, man. Jimmy Fallon is useless, unfortunately. I don't think he's that funny. No, Jimmy Fallon has writers, and 
the writers maybe need to be fired. <laughs> yeah, you know? well. But yeah. Trevor, Trevor Noah is a nice, uh, refreshing face to be on TV in yeah. those talk shows. Yeah. You know, not only because he's black. And South African. But, and South African. But his opinions and the way that he's, he's very articulate. Yeah. Which I enjoy a lot. Yeah. He's very articulate. Yeah. yeah. I like, I like turning on my TV, like, you know, guys like him. Uh, what's his name? Seth, Seth Myers, mm. who does the show After Fallon. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Know? I know Seth Myers. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh man. But yeah, I think the biggest travesty in all of late night te- television was uh, taking off Craig Ferguson. Man. Bro, mind you, he was really toying. He was really toying the line with sexual harassment. Really, <laughs> old Craig Ferguson. That's why he was the man. I... He was. He <laughs> was really <laughs> t- tiptoeing. Like yeah. he, he just had to say the wrong thing yeah. to the wrong person, and he would have been cancelled cultured been, like, so fast. Like, see, but that's the thing. Like, he was like, you know what? I'm yeah. out. And then, like, and then now people go back and watch the videos and like, let's see, it's a fucking flirt. Yeah. And he and like, hell yeah. But harmless. It's harmless. Like, he was so good but, at but it. it was, but, you know, but there was a good example of people who knew what they were getting into because yeah. of what a show is. They voluntarily went on. Yeah. And and it was banter at the they, end of the day. Oh. It was banter for most of them. See, nowadays, everything just gets taken out of context. Context is very important and like, for a lot of things. It, like, yeah. Which is why... A lot of stand-up comedians are terrified to say things. Yeah, all the old school ones are still around. Yeah. Like like Dave Chappelle, best best comedian living at the moment. You know, like, you know like, I, I think we can all agree yeah. with that. And listen, Hands he's down. he's a guy who is, uh, you know, he's he's left, but he owns a gun. You know, but he but he's very grounded, and yeah. and, and he still has his ear to the grindstone for most of the shit that happens on the street. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Did you watch his eight minutes and thirty six yeah. seconds um, bit? Yeah, yep. really short. But he actually made me rethink the entire way that I viewed racism in a way. Yeah, you know, American in particular. Like, I, I'm I'm trying to be very careful not to sort of project what's happening in America and happening here, but mm. I think he explained himself so well and the issues that are sort of highlighted there and said, you know, but, yeah. um, it, it's very eye opening, and he doesn't fuck around. eh? No. like he, like he, he will tell you all the shit that you don't want to hear, but probably need to fucking hear right now. Yeah. You know, um, there's uh there's the one special he did. I forgot which one. The Netflix special. Yeah, one of the Netflix ones where he's um, it's a real, it's in a real like small setting, mm. and he explains why he had to go to Africa. Right, right, and but he does it. He does it. He like he uses a book that he read as the analogy, mm. and he goes, "This is why I left Africa. Mm. I was nearing the end of my tenure as being one of a uh, Hollywood's uh, end table." You know, mm. um, yeah, and like honestly, like what is it? This I, I see this a lot in the in the YouTube comment section. But Dave Chappelle is, you know, everyone's just everyone's trying to be funny, but Dave Chappelle is a is a philosopher telling jokes. He's yeah, he's he's not trying to be funny. I don't yeah. think. Like he'll probably throw something. Like I remember <laughs> the, the entire eight minutes thirty six. I was like. I'm not laughing at anything, but this is some real deep knowledge he's throwing in. Yeah, throwing like, at me now. Like he'll sprinkle a joke in here and there. Yeah, he was like, one of the fans that really got me. And I don't know if this was timing, because obviously in comedy, timing is yeah, everything, everything, right? Yeah. But he's like in the middle of like going this real deep thing. He's like, I know it's not funny. Don't worry, I got pussy jokes later. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got some pussy jokes I can talk about. And I was like, oh, there, you know. And I lost it. I lost yeah. it then, you know. Because I was going in this real, like, I was really listening to what he's saying, like, like yeah. really listening yeah. to sort of what he was trying to say and what he was trying to sort yeah. of explain. And then he throws that into the mix and I just lost it. Absolutely yeah. lost it. And that is gold. Yeah. You no, know? that is absolute gold for sure. Um, sorry. And just mm-hmm. like, just speaking of comedians right now, and I reckon this is one comedian who would probably get canceled if he were still alive right now. If George Carlin were still alive right now, <laughs> he would, one, have a gold mine on so much that's happening right now just donald oh, trump himself oh. being president but then at the same time george Collins says the n-word mm. so many people will jump on that yeah but i don't think he'd give a fuck though he wouldn't give a fuck this, this is the thing i mean i don't know where your stance is on comedy but do you think there are certain things that we shouldn't make jokes of not 
Yeah. You should. I think everything's, everything's open. fair game. I think it's. I think so too. Fair game. I think so too. Because. <laughs> Cause that's that's the issue we're seeing now. Like you come in with these woke as fucking, you know, these comedians that that are trying to present themselves yeah. as woke and you know it's like not shitting on feminists. I always say not shitting on feminists, <laughs> and shitting on people, and I shit on them anyway. <laughs> Cal- Cal- listen, listen, you know, use this as a trigger warning, bitches. Okay, <laughs> so like you have a lot of <laughs> like feminist um, comedians come through. But they're fucking boring as fuck they're because of the content that they're yeah. saying. I'm sure it's funny and I get the comedy. But if like if you're trying to establish yourself as a person in comedy, which is competitive in itself. Yeah. You need to fucking be willing to take risks, man. You need to be yeah. and you need to be relevant. You need to be talking about shit that's happening now as controversial as it is. Yeah. And I think if you can make fun like a, a person who is ridiculously, who's so P- un PC and still alive now is a person, Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr, yes. That guy literally, he, he makes, like, his worst joke is about raping a baby. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, like, like where do you go with that? Yeah. You know? And then you have new comedians coming through and, and they're really mild. Yes, they're funny, but they're not like, I'm going to fall off my fucking seat funny. Yeah. You know? Nothing memorable. Yeah. I mean, they're, like, what is it? Yeah, because it's like, I've thought about getting into stand up. Mm. Like I've I've got like I think I've got like a good three minute set written on my phone or mapped out on my phone. Mm. And a lot of it has to do with getting hit as a kid. Right? And you know right. what Mark Twain says, like comedy humor is tragedy plus time. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. And you know, um, what is it? Uh, you know, in hindsight, I can laugh at jokes, and I'm sure like we all can. Of course, we can. Right, but is the joke good? Is it witty enough for you to get get away with? I think yes. I think it has to be. If you're gonna say something ridiculously controversial, you better be fucking sure that shit is funny, bro. Yeah. But should someone get in trouble for saying a stupid joke because it's controversial with the intention of making a joke? You're a comedian. Yeah. You make a joke. It's not funny, but it's ridiculously controversial. Well, Do you think they should be in trouble for it? As soon as, as soon as you, I reckon no, because as soon as everyone goes to a comedy show, the expectation is there that anything is fair game. For sure, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, like I'm of that mm. sort of like you know because like what is it? I I freaking watch stand up like crazy, mm. but. For people, for people to like take stand up sets or take Saturday Night Live um, skits mm. and just kind of like blast, blast it apart and be like, "That's not funny. You can't make jokes out of that. Get out of here." The joke might not be funny to you, mm. but if they're willing to push the envelope, then that means they're going in the right direction. It, it's funny because comedy is one of those ways where it's funny. But it actually allows you to sort of talk about very controversial topics yeah. in in a, in a different, non-serious kind of way. Yeah. It's probably why Islanders are so good at responding to comedy because we fucking laugh at everything. Like yeah. we say, we fucking laugh at... We laugh at everything. We, you know, we laugh at everything. Like you're in a car crash, you laugh first. And yeah. then you sort of are like, dad's going to kill me, dad just yeah. crashed the car. And, you know? sometimes, and sometimes you laugh at the most inappropriate times. Yeah, funerals are the worst for me. I, I, oh yeah. you know, I find myself laughing at funerals sometimes as well, and then I have to like take a step back and I'm like, "Fuck, my auntie died." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you kind of have to sort of yeah. reflect back and go like, "Oh, you look with it." She says she's lying right there, and yeah. I'm here cracking fat jokes like, "What the?" <laughs> but it's not my fault. You see someone go in there and have this ugly ass cry, yeah. and you know it's fake. And they're just, yeah. uh, you just can't help it. You but know? yeah, you're like, where the hell are you? Yeah. Who are you? Where hell, well, where first off, for me, most yeah. of the time, it's who are you? Who are you? Who are you to come in and think about like, my phone? <laughs> Security. Security. <laughs> oh, I'm in time to go. Uh, Far out. Take this, take this girl in her rehearsed cry. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. How much are they paying you to be here? <laughs> <laughs> the rent a crowd. Yeah, not the rent a crowd. Tears. <laughs> tears. Oh, but you know it's um. But comedy is one of those things that I hope 
is not going to die out because of the PC and cancel culture. Because it's, it's rampant at the moment. Hey, it's, man. It's, it's rampant at the moment. Hey, man, they already got Kevin Hart to not be able to host the Oscars, man. Yeah, I've lost a lot of respect for Kevin Hart after that. Oh. A, for someone who said he's ridiculously funny, was, was up and coming. And he does outrage humor. Like, even though it's not as outrageous as a Jimmy Carr. Mm. But, but you expect out of the blue stuff from Kevin Hart. But what he did was like, but this is the issue I, I get. You know, um, they go through people's Twitter feeds. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Years ago, ten yeah. even, and they pick out out of context something that is so controversial that's that's happening now. Watch you this. Know? We're gonna. I'm gonna get canceled now. No, nah, you're not gonna get, gonna get canceled. canceled. I'm the one that's facilitating this. But I think <laughs> you know. But the thing is, I think there needs to be more of these kind of conversations where we're. A, we're, we're mocking the shit out of cancel culture because of how ridiculous it fucking is. Yeah. And we should be mocking the fucking people who think that they have a right to be offended. Because they're offended, this mm. doesn't need to so this doesn't need to be a thing anymore. You know? I'm, I mean, I am guilty sometimes at participating in cancel culture. But I feel like... What is it? What's the word I'm looking here for here? I'm not a sheep. Mm. I'm not, you know, like I have my own mind where I can make up, where I'm like, nah, that's mm. that that should be cancelled, that shouldn't be, you what, know, like. What's an example of something that should be cancelled? If, if you don't mind, because I'm I'm completely the opposite. I don't think I, I'm a big believer that you can say anything you want to say. And we'll talk about talking stuff, you know, like freedom of speech. Yeah, you can say the most outrageous shit as long as it's not. You're not calling for harm, mm. you know. As in, in terms of go and beat the shit out of this person, I think mm. I do think everything is fair game. So for you, it, which is interesting, because okay. I've never actually come across someone who who is willing so, to sort of say. So okay, well, we'll just use the U.S. Mm. as the prime example for this. Confederate statues, and even here in New Zealand, right? Confederate statues and statues of people who have raped and pillaged. People mm. shouldn't be a thing, right? I but, get it. But, um, sorry, I'm just looking for another example here. But, like, but we'll go back to stand-up and comedy. But a comedian should be able to joke about mm. whatever they want. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe I sort of made it too specific about sort of, like, what you think shouldn't be a thing, right? Oh, okay. Um, okay, so you're obviously, in terms of the statues with uh, the the colonizers all the people that that fucked up the natives and stuff like that you're you're all for taking away no need to be seen yeah okay. but but then like with that with that logic mm. i don't think we should have statues of people at all that's a fair call because yeah. people are fucked <laughs> both sides actually yeah for sure like we yeah, all yeah. are yeah, you yeah, know, yeah like you know if i like straight up if malcolm x were alive right now i don't think he would be making he would make as big as a an impact as you would now than he would back then because everyone would be like nah bro this guy this dude used to fucking what what he killed someone or some shit back yeah, in the did. day he went to jail yeah yeah yeah, yeah That's like this found. dude this dude went to jail like yeah. who like we shouldn't be listening to you Malcolm X mm. that's an interesting point because you're right you look at the greatest influences of our days and if you plop them in a in 2020 yeah how successful will they be yeah. I don't know um, Malcolm X is one of those guys that was controversial in a, even in his time, even yeah. for black people. Yeah. You know, he was so radical radical that even other black people weren't really keen on sort of the sort of the values they stood for. Yeah. But look at sort of a lot of the stuff that he portrayed after he sort of left the the, 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 the Brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. And is it the Brotherhood or the Nation of Nation, Islam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and so he sort of didn't renege on a lot of stuff, but he did sort of change a sort of opinions and came at a more softer approach, but still highlighting the importance of independence, the importance of not relying on the white man, the importance of all of those things that we've kind of lost now in a way. Yeah. I think I think if we're talking about Malcolm X in particular, if we're talking about that Malcolm X outside of the, the, the Nation of Islam, I think he'd actually do well in this time, yeah. this year. Because the issues that he talked about then is still happening now. Yeah. We still are overly reliant on white people, the government. You yeah. Know, you know, I still think there's a lot of, um, I'm going to say, it, slave mentality for a lot of people. You know, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, 
my my unpopular opinion, mm. you know, and feel free to sort of um, disagree if if you want. But I think a lot of the reason why our people are still struggling with poverty and you know all, all the other health statistics that you can sort of think of, and, and why we're sort of still in that state is, is a mentality that we have where we feel that there is some unknown entity out there actively working to suppress us whether there's an institution out there and and listen i will premise that by saying there's definitely racist people out there there's definitely people who work in major institutions who are racist yeah but i don't believe in this day and age and i'm talking specifically about you know this day and age 2020 that there's institutions in new zealand and 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 i'm making sure i'm putting into context for new zealand in particular that is that is actively working towards suppressing our people. I think there's certain policies that don't benefit our people. I think there's certain um, political movements that don't benefit our people. But directly, you know, where you have someone who's saying, my job is to make sure that these brown people don't progress, I think is very, very rare. Not as mm. rampant as, as I believe, in what I believe, in what I've sort of experienced. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It, feel free to disagree, because it, this is for learning, right? So, this is. so, so <clears throat> I mean, this is... So, like, where do you kind of, like, lean on, like, say, like, equal opportunity, like... Mm. As equality as opposed equality, to equity. Like, like, yeah, like, what does it say? Kind of, like, um, what is it? Admission schemes to build, like, quota for Maori and Pacific mm. people. I don't have a strong, strong opinion on this because I have also used scholarships, nothing specific to Pacific Islander, but yeah. I have used being a Pacific Islander to get ahead. Yeah. I consciously didn't go for Pacific specific, Pacific specific, fuck, that's a hard word to say, <laughs> scholarships yeah. because I had this mindset where I didn't want, I don't, I don't want to be singled out as my merit of getting this job is because you're Pacific Islander, because you're just filling a box. It happens anyway, yeah. regardless if, if I didn't want to do it. It, it happens anyway. They're always yep. looking to fill a quota, right? Yep. Do I believe there needs to be a quota? This is not the hill I'm willing to die on? I would say no, purely because I believe that it doesn't actually help in the long run. Mm. And, 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 I, and sort of, I'll, I'll say, I'll expand a little bit more on that, because A, if you're putting a quota in, then you're most likely, and this is going to sound very right wing, you know, I'm, yeah. more, I'm more central than anything else, but yeah. I do lean a little bit to the right. As yeah. You can probably sort yeah. of pick up now. But like, I don't think the most qualified person, the, for me, the most qualified person should get the job. The job. Right? Yeah. I acknowledge that, you know, Pacific Islanders haven't had the best start. So, A, we're already starting off behind. Yeah. For sure. Acknowledge that 100%, just in case people think, like, you're not sort of acknowledging, like, intergenerational trauma. I am, for sure. I don't think that sort of always, because at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to sort of formulate my thought here. It's like, I don't want to be given something that you didn't earn? No, not that I didn't earn. No, no, not that I didn't earn. I don't want to be given something because you think I need this. In a weird, if, if so you kind like, of get, so it's kind of like a handout, sort of. In a way, in yeah. a way, like like I know that's not how it's intentionally supposed to be. Yeah, but I don't, I don't. The way that I see it is that if we are going to progress as a people, we need to be able to a have the those values that we fucking want it. Yeah, I don't want the government to give it to me. I don't want the government to sort of work on finding schemes to make me a better person yeah i want you to give me the tools and yeah. that sort of education yeah. access all that stuff that we don't have yeah and give me and, and this is sort of going back to your, your your original question give me the opportunity to show that That's i true. am better i am just as good if not better than my yeah. white counterpart over there you yeah. know and, and listen it, i mean my this is not a hill i'm willing to die on but this is what makes sense to me right now Right, mm. and I don't know whether it's the correct way. And yes, it doesn't acknowledge all the trauma that's happened in the past. Yeah, the, the you know the dawn raids, all those things. 
But if you look, talk to all of those guys that were in there, my father's one of those guys that was here in New Zealand in the Dawn Raids, and they were lucky enough to have their papers at the time. Mm. They, my dad is a really is a guy that doesn't really like government intervention because yeah. it's someone else telling you this is what you need as mm. opposed to you having the opportunity to choose what is good for you if, mm. if you sort of can follow my logic I'm, I'm, i don't feel like i'm explaining myself well but it's sort of this that's sort of the the, the formulation of, of of my opinions and, and perspective on, on the matter you know yeah yep. and, and it kind of goes against a lot of the the well understood norms and i'm in no way the smartest person out there on the planet and you know i'm not as well read as i probably could be so this opinion is a little bit based on my own personal experiences what i've seen mm. what i've heard what i've read you know with the very limited stuff that i have and this is sort of where i've come to in, in my conclusion you know yeah. it's like i would rather we don't start at the same you know people use the analogy um starting you know the racetrack where the white person has already raced and then you know 30 seconds later then the black dude follows yep. you know so he'll always be behind yeah so i'll use the same analogy i don't want us to start at the beginning together because that's already done. The race has already started. Yeah. I'd rather we finish at the same time. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's sort of my thoughts on the matter, okay. you know? which, which is a, an unpopular one because a lot of people will argue we need uh, the, the equity. We need to be given the opportunity to compete at the same level. And yes, but I don't think uh, scholarships and all that stuff that's aimed sp specifically at PIs is going to achieve that. I think giving us better access to, to schooling, housing, all that stuff that starts at the foundational level as children, you know, is going to allow us to overcome all these inequalities that we sort of are experiencing now. Mm. I mean, I may not be sort of acknowledging all the stuff, but that's sort of where I am sitting at the mm. moment. What about you? Because I'm, I'm kind of left leaning on this. Mm. Right. I, I'm of the school of thought that, you know, we need more of our people because I've seen this from first-hand experience, like being the only brown person in the room. Mm. That shit is uncomfortable. I can imagine, yeah. Right? Like, man, that's part of, the, you know, that's part of the reason why I felt so uncomfortable um, at uni and possibly one of the main reasons why I haven't gone back. Because, like, I literally, like, during one of my present, like, there was a paper we did called Intercultural Communication. And I literally sat through, like, four or five different tutorials mm. listening to white people tell me what racism is. <laughs> well, they are the perpetrator of well, racism most of yeah. the time, so. <laughs> I mean, but, like, what is it, like? Yeah, they, you know, they do get discriminated against and they do get, like, you know, the old, like, white joke thrown in their way, but they don't know what it's like, you know? Um, but, but sorry, I'm kind of going off topic. No, no, here. no, I'm sure it's all related. Um, but what is it? The, the, like, I fully get, like, you know, you're all about opportunity, mm. you know? Um, and I'm more or less like, what is it, like, why can't we make systematic change to these institutions to kind of understand that, you know, the experiences that a Balangi family has is not exactly the same as the experiences a Tongan family has. Mm. Like, we're a lot more communal. Our mm. people, um, what is it, our people are a lot more likely to have elderly people living with us. Mm. We're a lot more likely to have... Um, Young young kids running around, and a lot of the time, you know, the uni students are the ones taking care of the young ones and the elderly ones while the, you know, adults are off at work. So why can't we have a system that's more understanding of that instead of just looking at it from like, mm. this is how it's done. Mm. This is how it's, you know. I get that. So I feel like, what is it? We need more people to be able to, like, integrate, you know, to try and integrate these, like, mm. you know, changes to be made so that it's more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, friendly to, to brown people? So that it's, so that mm. it doesn't, so that it doesn't feel like, 
you know, it's still like, it's all just like a system built by white people for white people and us brown people have to just kind of get along. Mm. I, I, I get that. And that makes sense to me, for, for sure. I do think we need to be, there needs to be more of us in every field out there yeah. to make to normalize it right and in because positions of power yeah. and in positions of power as well um i guess we, we both agree on that i think it's how we do that is sort of where we probably differ slightly yeah. maybe in, in how we do that because it, it's a you know representation is is one thing you know um and, and force representation is another mm. i don't think anything that's done through force tends to not always in the, work yeah. out you know and in a way Forcing companies, let's talk about just companies at the, at the moment, you know, as opposed to sort of like doctors and stuff like that. Yeah. Forcing companies to accept um, Pacific Islanders, Maori and stuff like that, I think can be harmful because you do tend to possibly, this possibly not, not based this on any facts that I know, mm-hmm. but this is just, we, you know, we're just shooting the breeze here, shall we? Mm-hmm. Could possibly lead to people being more resentful. Yeah a lot of resentment because there could have been a possibly a more qualified and it doesn't have to be a white person could be a more qualified islander yeah but because there's a certain quota for mm. maori you know and, and listen maori need to be represented for sure yeah definitely this definitely. is their fucking land of course they need to be represented we just need to figure out how do we do that and integrate what we count as cultural norms and what maori count as cultural norms into what is a white society? You know. Yeah. How do we do that? Um, is it through scholarship or is it through? I mean, is is it through like? Um, no, no. Do I, I'll edit that out. <laughs> shall I? Um, I don't think. Oh well, listen. I think that there's two ways at the moment. We're kind of talking about two ways of how we try get to the same goal. Right? Yeah. And maybe I, I mean, listen. I'm. I can sometimes be a hypocrite, and this is a, an opinion that sort of has sort of flourished over years, because I had lots of help. I was also on the benefit, you know, I mean, mm. you know, when I had my first kid, you know, I was working a shitty job, had a lot of support from my parents, a lot of support from my wife's parents, mm. and I think that's what's allowed me to help progress, and I know not everyone will have that opportunity yep. to talk about opportunities. Um, but at the same time, I don't think, and, and let's, you know, and we can talk about benefits in particular. Um we tend to and, and i'm talking about benefits in, in particular because it is very relevant to the pacific islands because not that national is any better than labor but labor uses the benefit as a way to sort of pander to the pacific islanders like you know because we are majority mm-hmm. of us are on, on on benefits we are not the highest group of people on benefits but we do have if we talk to pacific population there's a significant amount of us on and some right? people taking advantage of it yep. just saying. but if you look at how it's set up you're actually being punished for trying to get yourself out of poverty. So if you don't work, you know, and you have all these stuff that's sort of um, causing you, you know, you get more money. Mm. If you try to get part-time work, what do they do? They cut your benefit, which you makes it benefit. even harder. Yeah. It should be the other way around, in my opinion. You know, I think we should be trying to incentivize people trying to progress. There's obviously, listen, I'm talking about things in general obviously there's people with um disabilities other things that you know that that are that probably can't sort of because of whatever unfortunate circumstances of birth or whatever whatever Mm. right Mm. but i think we need to be switching how we uh are trying to help our people if we're talking about benefits in particular we should be incentivizing people trying to 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 move out of poverty yeah why not pay people more to who are looking for jobs and who work part-time oh we'll top you up a little bit more because you're working part-time yeah as opposed to you're working part-time now flip half your benefit gone now yeah. you're sort of a working a, a difficult shitty job part-time and now you've got less money or the same money but now you're working a shitty job yeah you know um whether that's viable i don't know but it, those are one of the things that i can see that's very harmful you know mm. and kind of going off on a really big tangent here a, a little bit but I do think it's it does it's that's an example of something that's sort of holding us back, and probably can be sort of considered sort of one of those institutions that are probably harmful, you know. Mm. Um, but you know, do I have the answers? Fuck no, <laughs> you know. I I know what I'd like to see, and I think all of us share that same vision. We mm. want our people to progress. 
You yeah. Know? Not just our people, like the indigenous yeah. migrants, all those people. We we want to be we better all be in people. Better spot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we need to find some way of, of finding that middle ground of how we 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 get that. You know, because yeah. for me, I'm 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 really big into the grassroots stuff. If we can, like, look at all the the low decile people. Mm. We focus purely on their education. We, we make that that school as best as it can with all the resources, funding that it needs, to make them competitive with all these private schools. Yep. Right. Um, and will that make things better? Possibly. You know, because what's the difference? Like the, the biggest difference is that private schools have a lot of resources to help keep kids resources. engaged. Yeah. You know, they have they have subjects that are never, you know. Um, taught in public schools I, yeah know? and just as an example like i went to a disile seven school mm. right M- like purely by luck mm. like we started when i first went to mary because it was a disile five by the time i left disile seven i went to auckland grammar so oh <laughs> whoa <laughs> i almost oh went to, i almost went to meg's oh no my dad this... was my dad was head boy at meg so i decided i don't want that smoke i'm out of here I'm going to go to the... So you decided to go to the enemy school? Well, listen, I can't say it was the best decision <laughs> of my of, life. Instead, of coming, dropped, to the, instead I, of coming to the offshoots? I dropped out. No, I, <laughs> one of my many regrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, um, what is it? So, um, so just based off experience, like of the mm, opportunities of that are afforded, um, I remember speaking to someone at uni mm. and I was like... Yo, did you do, like, how was your media studies class? Because I didn't do media studies, right? Such privilege. <laughs> Such those, privilege. Those pricks. Assholery. But, but, and, and, and the dude went to manga there, mm. and he goes, no, we didn't have a media studies class. I was like, what the fuck? You know, but I then, can't speak to you now. You can't sit yeah. at my table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but, right? but, but that's a good example, yeah, for sure. Like, that's a good, like, you know, like, fully, I get that, like... Mm. You know, why aren't this our one schools? And I'm pretty sure they are funded more, but they should be getting more chances to give, to provide better opportunities for, because, like, I've seen, like, some of the creativity that comes out of, like, schools out south side or from mm. students out south. Man, they put anything that I create to shame. Yeah, I, had a, I had a good friend who was on my earlier podcast who went to schools in Manurewa. Yeah. You know? Now he's he's he managed to sort of become he's now an artist yeah you know, and he's doing amazing work and he's a good example of people who have talent and may you know unfortunately had to do it a little bit rougher than other people i don't yeah. know whether that fuels an, or the artistic expression going through hardships yeah you know um you know artists cut off their ears and become you know very well well yeah. renowned um but i do believe that if your friend who you talked about who you know how your media studies class was if he had the same opportunity to attend media studies class, I think you might find, I think and feel, think and feel, you know, um, that they would, things would be very different, you know? And the only thing, yeah. Might uh, I add? Go on. I was 20 years old, my first year of uni. This Fair dude, enough. fresh faced from high school Ooh, at uni. So he's already, he's already feeling out of place. And he's beating me. <laughs> I mean, really hardships. I mean, look. I think we can't deny hardships makes people more resilient and harder yeah. working for sure. Um, but I, I still think. I mean, I mean, I haven't been given a scenario yet where people, if they aren't, you know, that opportunities are what's really needed. Mm. Yeah. I don't know how we do that. I don't know if it's going to fix everything. And I've never claimed to know everything about anything, aside um, from this is my opinions, we're right? Both on the same boat, bro. It's two jackasses having a conversation, right? <laughs> but, but. It, try not to get cancelled. <laughs> bro, people can try. Like, getting cancelled is going to people's sponsorship. I'm sponsored by Blue Deer. They don't give a <laughs> fuck. You need the Blue Deer. I'm going to Blue Deer you in the face, bro. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it, it's one of the things where it's. It, because people are so afraid of that cancel theft, you know, they don't have they, conversation they, like this. Because how yeah. often, and a serious question, how often do you hear someone talk about what what we're talking about? Because I don't have a lot. Maybe this podcast, it's because I've created a, a space to have this conversation, I, I get mm. more conversations about it. But like mm. in your day-to-day stuff, a lot of the people have, well, the people who are willing to talk about it have one view, 
Yeah. Right? Which is usually the opposite view to me. And lunchtime banter is not a good time to have debates no. with people no. because you still have to work with them at the end of the day. Yeah. But, you know. Um, well, like, um, well, what is it? Because I have, I have friends of, like, from diverse backgrounds. Of course. And sometimes they're trolling. Sometimes mm. they're being for real. Other times... You know, we sit down and have a serious conversation and I'm like, yo, like, you know, I grew up with you, mm. like, most of my life. But it's crazy to know or just find out then that you hold a completely different, you know, viewpoint from mine. Mm. And on, and and to be honest, I respect yeah. that more, that people are able to come at you straight, mm. you know, and you know, and, and hold their ground and you're like, you know, and then at the mm. end of the day, you know, you walk away and you still like, you know, respect their viewpoint, but I, I'm over like, what is it? I'm over hearing different people. So many people argue to the point where like, they're ready to cancel someone. And I'm like, so done. Bro, that's Twitter. That's, that's Twitter. Tw- that's Twitter Watch in a this. nutshell. Someone, someone's going to uncover one of my old tweets where I tried to get someone cancelled. Watch this. Well, I I left Twitter like maybe last year, middle of last year. Yeah. I just got into too many unnecessary bullshit arguments, which I was losing most of the time. <laughs> but I found myself getting really affected by it. Yeah. Because I don't know why. I, I'm like, I'm your kind of person that really... I live my life where I don't really give a fuck about people's opinions. I mean, if, if it's if it's something that's aimed at trying to hurt me. Yeah. Discussions like this is different, right? But, like, I, I got pretty thick skin. But for some reason, Twitter was one of those mediums that really fucked with me. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So much. So much. And, I mean, now I'm back on it. Mostly for advertising the podcast. Mm-hmm. But the shit's still the same. The sh- people are still out there fucking, you know, causing dramas. Yeah, I mean, what is it? I I see all the drama all the time, mm. and I'm just like, oh, US and Australia, New Zealand, polys are arguing are again. Fights, yeah, like, but that's nothing oh, new, man. Yeah. That's nothing. Oh, new. look at that! It's, someone's yeah. someone's being called racist again. Oh, what's that? Island is saying the n word again. Oh, this is like straight up. I'll be honest I right know. now. I used to say the n word. Yeah, of course. Who hasn't? Right. If you haven't said the n word, you're a fucking liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. Right, but I've had even to, in your mind, I've still had counts. To, I've had to like get rid of that because that's mm. a bit, you know, that's unacceptable. Even though I've been caught it mm. multiple times, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting because it's it's still a word that's being commonly used, you know. But yeah. but, but you know, so look look at the states; they use it all the time. Yeah, you know? but but does the, it make but, it okay? I don't know. But, I don't know. I don't but know. To be honest. I don't have an opinion on it at yeah. this point in time. I mean, yeah, but our people shouldn't be weighing in on that. Yeah, so that's something, good point. You know, and, you know so, we won't get too much into it because we're yeah. really, we're almost going to hit three hours here. That's ridiculous. That's, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. But um, we do tend to sort of inherit issues that don't belong to us. Yeah. Like the black movement, that is not our movement to sort of have opinions on. All we can do is stand and support. We can support, you know. I'm I'm for supporting because you know, as as brown people who who have been uh, traumatized, you know, you know all that other stuff. Mm. Yes, we can sympathize and empathize, but we also have to remember we didn't go through that. They did. Yeah. We shouldn't. Uh, uh, this is hypocritical of me, but I do think we need to hold our tongue from time to time for certain issues and allows other people to have their say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We can have opinions. And you can have an opinion about anything. Yeah. But there is a point in time where you should, you know, hold on to that opinion. Don't, 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 don't delete it or sort of throw mm. it away. But there's a point in time where you need to think, is me expressing this opinion going to be helpful at this point in time? Yeah. Probably not. Let's step back. Let this person have their say. Yeah. First then have your opinion but let them have the say first i mm. think so that, and that's a tough one where we're all we're all struggling to find in our day-to-day life is yeah. uh withholding our opinions yeah and and i exactly get that which is why i'm like you know on twitter when of i course. see all that when i see all the drama stuff off off 90 percent of the time i'm ready with my thumbs <laughs> 
I'm ready to pop off. Uh, I am. I. I can't. I, and then I'm just like, uh, why? Why would I contribute to the noise? Exactly. Exactly. Right. You know why? Like you can't even go in there and try and be a referee because you just get pulled into. Did you it. get pulled in? Yeah. yeah. The amount of times. And I'm trying my best not to scroll through Twitter. Like, Twitter, I find really interesting stuff. Like, have you seen Winston Peters' latest tweet about wanting to beat the shit out of um, one of the Greens, I think? No, I have Yeah, they were just... From Uncle Winnie P? Oh, Winnie P, bro. New Prime Minister. Go for <laughs> The winds. But he, but he, but he, you know, of he's got a good quip, you ones. know? He's got yeah. a, he's got a, he's pretty, um, pretty witty, that, that man, for his age, you know? I respect oh. him. I respect him. He's a controversial, which is kind of why I like he him. Needs, I just drawn to these controversial people. He you know, needs, he needs to retire though. He's an old man. He's, he's going to retire when the police Did come you? to escort him to the rest home. Look, you know, <laughs> see, deputy prime minister is going to be his peak. Come on. I think so. I think. Well, th- mind you, there was a time where he was running as temporary prime uh, minister. Yes, he was. Oh, yes, that's right. So when 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 our prime when, minister uh, when, when uh, uh, went on maternity when um when she had baby. Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Satan's <laughs> child. Oh my god. Do you think <coughs> that's probably why that's probably why uh, we're doing so well for COVID at the moment because we've she sacrificed some she poor... sacrifice. Oh no 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 oh, no, 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 no 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 we are <laughs> Hey, let's just say <laughs> I cr- still I won't be honest. Okay, I'll be honest. I still reckon Epstein's alive. <laughs> you reckon? I reckon No, I think no, I think he's dead for sure. I think it's more like no, I think he's dead for sure because he had too much dirt, too much dirt for people, and it's not has nothing to do with Illuminati. It's not actually a conspiracy oh, therapy. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. See. I didn't mean to say. I reckon he's still alive. I mean to say he didn't kill himself. Oh no, for sure, Epstein didn't kill that's himself. There's some, there's some snuff shit. Oh man, I wish we brought this up earlier. I'd love to just go through. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. But in in being mindful for time, this is the longest episode of ZJ you've had. It, it's definitely. Oh my god. Definitely. Gosh. But good, good, good conversations and, and and great information and stuff. I appreciate you coming up, man. No, thank you for yeah. having me. Here. Like and, I really appreciate it too. Yeah, and and thanks for sharing your story and, and sort of what you've been through and and you know being hopeful still for the future. Um, and listen, all the stuff that we talked about today, really relevant, I think. Yeah. You know, for for what's going on in in our public space and political space at the moment, mm-hmm. for sure. So, where can we find you, man? Where where's the best place that we can hit you up? Uh, <sighs> Uh, find me on uh, Instagram um, mm. at Isao Kawakimoto or on TikTok Isao Kawakimoto or on Twitter Isao like Kawakimoto <laughs> yeah just anywhere YouTube You're everywhere yeah Isao Kawakimoto but yeah just uh, find me there and uh, please don't dig through my old tweets <laughs> I'm gonna do that tonight. <laughs> Speaking of cancel culture. Speaking yeah. of cancel culture, didn't yeah. you get angry about this? <laughs> well, pre- yeah, yeah. Previously on cancel, Previously culture. On cancel yeah. culture. That's a good. That sounds like That's a good a good podcast one. name. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, thank you everyone for listening in. You can find this episode on most streaming sites: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the good fucking shit. You know, you can if if you have an opinion. Keep it to yourself. No, no. <laughs> DM me. D- DM me. D- DM me. So DM me on um the Thought Plantation podcast, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Ooh. DM me too. Yeah, DM us and see what you think. And um, if you have any sort of opinions that may sort of run parallel or counter to what we believe in, um, let us know because I think it's important that we have this conversation. But in saying that, thank you so much for tuning in, and um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.